What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week exclusive no one else gets to see it apart from the patreons and you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well that's what you get and on top of all of that you get access to the entire back catalog of the patreon episodes we've been doing that for like a year now there's loads of content there there's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk they only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us, and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. Pod. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Feeling a little bit vulnerable. Feeling, feeling good, but feeling vulnerable. Is that how you describe yourself? Describe yourself. That wasn't a word. We, we had a, a long day on the ale. Now, like, when you say we, you are not talking about me. No, it was me, Paul Smith, Paul Blair, his mate, and Freddie Quinn. And <laughs> hey, his mate. Fred- <laughs> Made a big shout out to his mate. <laughs> Made a big impression. <laughs> and that guy. It was some of my closest friends and colleagues and another guy. <laughs> Um. <laughs> Adam might pass out. Really fun before your <laughs> podcast. I've had to go. If I laugh loads, I might black out. I'm like, woo! Challenge on, <laughs> motherfucker. Drinking, and he, he's coming in today because we had a, a late guest cancellation. Freddie Quinn's coming in today. He's today's guest, as you already know, if you're watching it, because it'll be in the, the the little thumbnail, won't it? Or if you're listening, it'll have said his name in the in the episode. You know, who the guest is. Sort of before we do. Skip to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really get the, the, like locked in with the logistics of a podcast. I mean, you know, you can read, unless you can't read, and then there's other issues. Really, you're probably having a difficult time of it as an adult that isn't, you know, if able they can't to read. read they got it on? Colors. Co- orange, orange, orange and bl- orange and blue. <laughs> yeah, they got the braille app. Yeah, there's someone just sat at home staring in a can of iron brew. Braille's amazing. <laughs> Braille is amazing, I think. Braille? Mm. Just like dots and fieldsies. Yeah. We, how did they know where the Braille is? Exactly. Yeah. And. Totally. How is there enough dots <laughs> in the world to spell totally. a word? <laughs> I can't wait to read this book. <laughs> so this is a wall. No, but genuinely, don't like. <laughs> it says exit on the wall and it's got Braille under it. <laughs> or the exit there. It's my. It Have exits got Braille on them? Yeah. Have, have road signs got braille on them? Road si- no, you don't touch road signs. No, I right. don't think you should be driving. <laughs> <laughs> You've missed your exit, Steve. I've killed four people. Is it against the law to be blind to drive? Do you yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just great, great little add-on. Is it against the law to be blind? I mean, they should think about it. <laughs> should be against the law. Just full of people. And in China, in China, it definitely is. Um, is it By illegal way, to... China can fuck off. Yes, mate! Because right? I put a video on TikTok. It was, oh. just, it was smashing it. And what happened? It got removed because it said the word cocaine. Yeah? <laughs> against community guidelines. Oh, dear. So the Chinese not I love just a bit think, of coke. I just think you can make... You can make comedy without talking about illegal substances, Adam. All right? So I think try and be better as a person and a comedian. All right? Yeah. Fucking China taking shit down off TikTok. Stupid We've got a TikTok about 9-11 and didn't get taken down. I know. Yeah, but they're like, ha, ha, ha. That's funny. Is that what, is that, you think, <laughs> as a nation, <laughs> China found 9-11 China funny. don't give a fuck. What's that accent? That's my China. <laughs> What was I talking about? We're fucking Beijing in uh, this man. TikTok. Ready? Um, drinking with that cunt and Paul Blair is is dangerous. So he isn't sat there, by the way. People what? think that. Tell them that. What? He isn't sat there. Freddie is not sat there. Oh, mate. Do yourself a <laughs> favour. 
Like, comment on YouTube if you want. If you've got something sound to say, if you've got a little joke, but like, why didn't they talk to the guest for an hour and <laughs> ten minutes? <laughs> How to make yourself look like an artard in one fucking YouTube comment. Artard? Mm. Is that what we're doing now? Yeah, pull is the punch. That, is it the E? Pull the punch. Is that what they get upset by? Isn't it? Uh, more drug references. <laughs> Thank you. Very popular podcast. And that's the kind of banter we really thrive on. Adam. Um, <laughs> um, Freddie, so we were drinking Peronis, pints of Peroni Oof. all day, and it's just not. Oh, you can't no sesh on a Peroni. Ah, can you, you can't. Fuck. And Paul what can you Blair's sesh an on? Animal. What can you sesh on? What's your sesh pint? Carlin, Carlsberg, Australia. I'm still. I'm still like four percent in it. Is it? We, what were we drinking last week? Carlin. What, Peroni's only like, like four point six. We'll Carlin. Was it 4.8? Carlin tops we were on because we wanted it to not taste like Carlin. Yeah, yeah. so that's 3.6, isn't it? Yeah. With a bit of lemonade, you've taken it down. Sen- no, Carlin's sensible four. booze. Yeah, but with a little bit of lemonade, yeah. it's now not, is it? Yeah, it's like yeah, just yeah. taking yeah. a bit of. You can do that. Right. Like, but 5.1 Peroni. Is it 5.1 Peroni? Yeah. Heavy. 4.8, I is think. Is that how alcohol works? Wow. What? Is that how percentages work? Of course it is. 4.8. No, not me and that, but I'm saying if you, if you put a bit of lemonade in, it's not. F- oh, yeah. is it go? Is it pint? Is it per pint? Yes, yeah, how it works. Well, it's a percentage, isn't it? Yeah. Five point one percent of a per, pint of Peroni is a per pint. Is alcohol is a per pint? Yeah. No, it's it's per whatever it is. It's a percentage. I'm just saying you're diluting it a little bit, aren't you? Yeah. So I, you're probably not taking the percentage down, but you are diluting it. It's not as boozy, so it yeah. must that pint if it's got a dash of lemonade yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Is a, is a little less than 3.6% or whatever, or 4%. Yeah. Well, I feel like you don't know how percentages work. No, I do. I, just, I was a bit confused at what... Uh, what yeah. Don't fuck with Adam. He did really well at school. I did he did dead well at school. school. I, and he, he, you know... Beat some kid at chess, and they were all made up, saying how to beat him. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the king of the world. <laughs> yes. I am the best. I am the best. a chess story, hand on heart. I don't know whether I made it up or not. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an inkling, though, haven't we? That's I, f- I feel like fun, it's though. true, but I feel like I might have made it up years ago, and I'm just remembering. All right, <laughs> yeah. everyone does that though. And everyone I turn into a mind. wolf at night. Um, yeah. Right, so yesterday's boozing, Peroni, all day, and then into town. I message ding <laughs> ding. Um, yeah, just a, a really heavy one. Got in uh, about one o'clock in the morning. Uh, Sam was asleep. And then she wasn't, and she was really quite upset because she had. And what work happened at there? What morning. happened there? I feel like we uh, skipped over a little part of the. I got in at one, and uh, Sam was asleep, and then she wasn't, and that's the end of that story. I woke her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being a drunken bellend, took her, took Tell her dog how, out though. for a wee. Tell us how. I was like, Ralphie, you wanna go for a wee? She was like, He's been for a fucking week, get him fucking bed. And I was like, He needs another one. So I took him downstairs, couldn't open my own back door because I hadn't unlocked it. So it's on like a, you know, patio sliding door. They have those little pin things in the top and the bottom. Yeah. I hadn't took the pin out. So I was just trying to rag the oh, door no. off. Uh, and then I couldn't get my jeans off. Sexy. Yeah. So as payback this morning, she uh, stole my phone when it was on the bed. Yeah. And on my own Instagram story, she videoed me throwing up. The audio of you puking. Mm-hmm. You're doing pretty well considering you puked several hours, like not Twice that long Twice as well. Ago. Did Twice. it again after she'd gone to work. Just... It was necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes you just feel better afterwards, don't you? Get the, de- if get I the get, devil out to you. If I get to puking stage, I, I look, I feel terrible. Like, I'm not like, cool, I'll drive to get a curtain and do a pod. Yeah. So you're holding it together, together pretty well. Tonight. Got to do two sets of hot water. Right. It's going to be a long ass day for me. Yeah, no nap time. And then tomorrow, going out boozing with that cunt. So much boozing going on. You have and to come and join us soon, aren't you, babe? Soon, but not just yet. Why just bring the baby? Yeah, Jack. Just give him a fucking, give him a shandy. Yeah. It's not to be a top. Yeah, he starts crying. Give him some whiskey. That's an actual thing, isn't it? You rub whiskey on your finger and rub it on their eyes and it calms them down. Yeah, it's NHS. It's, <laughs> on, it's on, yeah. You can't speak to, see, a, can he? So like, speak to a midwife. And it has like, to be scotch, though. It, it, oh, it, yeah. It doesn't work. No. Oh, yeah, no. Not yeah. cheap shit. Got to yeah. do the good stuff. Mm. Have you tried that yet? Yeah, I've done it. did it this morning. Put whiskey on his eyes. And then went, see you, love. Bye-bye. I'm off. But you just assume it was okay. 
one day soon I'm coming boozing with you. What was the, uh, what happened with, because Blair and Freddie at some point started talking about that drinking competition, didn't they, yesterday? They want to do a lockdown lock-in and have a drinking contest. Oh, jeez. They have proposed that, and we'll talk to Freddie about it in a bit. Uh, yeah, they're keen. And I think what would be good that night, if we just took a chill, you know, if we just had a few, <laughs> we're just in a like, l- nice little zone and just watched the chaos unfold. So we've done three lockdown lock-ins. The one where it was the three of us, Car- this was pre-Finn, PF. Pre-fin. It was actually his fair second day. Were you in? No, no you weren't in, were you? You, just you weren't allowed. Um, and Carl, Carl puked. Yeah, but you were drinking like a yard of brandy or something, weren't you? <laughs> I can't remember. I was drinking anything. That was silly. Yeah. And then the second one was Johnny Bongo, and that was the PB, where I don't want to get that drunk again on the pod. Adam was like a meat cheese fucking <laughs> zombie. And then Ishan was a couple of weeks ago, and I think it was my favourite of the lockdown lock-ins. But I think you're right. I think it will... People will want to watch... Because in terms of Patreon, it's about what's going on Patreon, you need to be like rewarding the patrons who support us. There's nearly three and a half thousand, uh, and that's amazing. And you also need to be like coaxing in listeners who are like, ah, I don't want to pay for a podcast. You're daft. You really do want to pay. It's three quid a month. So you want to coax them in. But I don't think we can get involved in that drinking competition. Otherwise, it's going to be a Patreon lock in of us going, yeah. I, I you, can't drink like them animals. Can you? Can you give it up with Freddie and Paul? So what makes him so good at boozing? It's Freddie, actually. Like, to be honest with you, Paul Blair, through sheer will, will stay awake until he physically can't. No, he hits a level and stays there forever, doesn't he? It's like a light switch, isn't it? Yeah. But Freddie does seem sober even when he's hammered. Right. It's really strange. The, the cunt can drink. He can really put them away. You know what I'm like? I'll not, Until someone literally refuses to give me any more alcohol, I've got a tendency to just keep going. I'm not as bad as I used to be. I can go home now, but like, I'm sort of like, yeah, let's stay out. Let's keep going until we're not allowed anymore. But I get fucked a few hours before that. Yeah, he does. I just used to go home. I just, you hit a point of alcohol and then can't, can't, can't remember the point where I'm just like, I'm done. It could be late on or whatever, but I was well known for just wandering home. Just like a, a weird, like... Not going, oh, fuck, I need to get me home. Being, a- being able to just walk off. and Paul just Smith used to do that. Just, just ghosting my mates. Not even trying yeah. to be a cunt. Mm. Just in a weird, like, I'm done. You get like that, but you... I don't often- go home. I just, if I get like that, I just stop drinking and stay out. Wow. Well, there's been times in the past where you've been like, I want to go home, and I've gone, no. And he's left me in town on my own. Yeah. I just refuse to go home. Like a, like an, a, I have a, co- like a couple, story, like a couple falling yeah. out. Yeah. That was... Um, that horrible junction coming out of town, wasn't it? Yeah, he jumped stopped out of the, the taxi there. and ran back to town. And the taxi driver went, whoa, lad, I went, let's just go, lad. Don't yeah, worry about just it. Just let him go. Let him be free. <laughs> it happened with Paul. It's like release, releasing Adam Rowe back into the wild, like, go. Remember with Paul Smith that time when he got off? And three hours later, I was in a taxi on the way home and he used to live in the next road to me, Paul. And um, he'd walked home. So in the time that we'd been drinking for three hours, Paul had stumbled to, what, five miles? Yeah. yeah. And I picked, right the way through Chewbrook. Yeah, and I picked him up in a taxi and went, lad, what the fuck? He went, oh, I just walked home. So we'd had a night out whilst, as he was walking home. Jesus. Yeah. It c- kind of clears you up, that walk. He wasn't didn't. clear, though. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't. No. He was just like... I think he was like getting up. I'll call off the smackheads on the way through Tubu. Like, yeah, just, a bit of that. Like a to... marathon runner <laughs> grabbing water <laughs> off a table. <laughs> yeah, I mean, give us some of that specky, Badoo. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. When was the last time... You went out, out. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Fucking uh-uh. I went for drinks after... No. I went for drinks is not the start of an out, out. Story. I went to a party. I went to drinks and a party. Oh, right. The night before we found out we were, like, Laura was pregnant. So that was one, because I had a little bit of, um, you know, I found myself on some uh, South American supplements that night. And I was... Dogs. Okay, thanks for <laughs> thanks for helping me with, with the euphemism. Um, just some vitamins and um, cocaine. God, do you want us to get pulled from China? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no one's watching this, this in is China. Disgusting. 
I do not like this. <laughs> is this fella <laughs> trouble? The Chinese government <laughs> were just like, this is hilarious. I love stories about Paul Smith drinking. And then Say you cocaine. said cocaine. They were like, cocaine. Say it in Chinese. Cocaine. Right. It's Chinese. Cocaine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was the that was a I bit like of a sesh. Cocaine. If you want to feel weirdly guilty, be a bit hungover and on the come down and have your wife go, you're going to be a dad again. And you're like, okay, better sort my shit out. How did she tell you? She rang me. She was, uh, she was away for the weekend. That's why I was out playing. Ah. It's just one of them weird moments where you're like, okay, you know, if- I'm going to have a shower and I'm going to change my ways, which I did for four or five weeks. <laughs> And then I did it again. <laughs> because when I get really Rex, I quit drinking forever. And I promise that I'll never do drugs ever again until I do them again. <laughs> Every proper hangover is me finding God and changing my ways until about Monday tuesday where it wears off a little bit and then i've started the like stopwatch on the next big booze up if men were the ones who got pregnant right how would you announce it to your partner how would you tell her you know what i mean because a phone call no offense laura fucking shite that you know what i mean yeah but it's not the f- everything's more amazing with the first one everything's more amazing with the first one with the second one with the se- why is the broadband speed test on the screen? <laughs> He's hung over. Look, look, look what's happened. Look what's happened. Bite. <laughs> what is the way you tell your broadband speed test? <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Hey, on. love, have a look at this broadband speed test. <laughs> look at the upload speed. That's how Jizz went into the womb that fast, and it worked. Oh, 90 what, mega. Neg- what girls be jizzing in here? You've got the womb. No, if you it squirt it on you and then it would you'd soak it through your sores. Uh, your oh pores. my god, oh my that's god, one of sores? the worst things you've ever said. <laughs> they squirt it on your sores. Oh, <laughs> I haven't got any what? sores. On your pores. Oh my god, but you said sores like, oh my god, you got so many cuts and bruises. I'm looking to be a dad though. Cut me. Um Right, so if it was the same sort of biological process, except for some miracle, the baby ended up in your... How would you announce it? The first time, Laura came home on her lunch and came... <laughs> for some reason, I thought you were about to say, on a horse. <laughs> she came home on a horse. First time she came home on a horse. She came on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, sir, an heir to the throne. Ride with me. That's the last thing you want to do if you've just found out you're pregnant. I want to get on fucking horse, do you? On horse. Is that how eggs drop out? I feel like it would be. Oh. Um, <laughs> on a lunch, anyway. She came on a lunch. She, she didn't came on a Oh, God. She, I squirted on a sauce. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, love. Yeah, it was... I don't know. I feel like with all those moments, there's a thing where you can overbuild it and try and be a cheesy cunt. There's also something nice about just getting on with it and being like, you know, like... At a comedy club, when someone comes in the dressing room, like there's a guy who wants to uh, propose to his missus, it in in front of the crowd, and you're like, yeah, I thought that was sort of fun when I was 22 and I just started in comedy. I was like, oh wow, how special! And all the other older comics were like, Meh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you miserable fucks! And then you do a few years of comedy and you go, yeah, it's it's the gesture's fine, but it's a bit cringy. It's also a bit like no one knows you. No one really cares. It can go wrong. It can fuck up the show. We don't know if you're a good couple. We don't know if you're going to do this properly or you just you just got a bevy in you and you're just attention seeking. How, and so I just how, get a bit negative about it. How could you be it. sad we don't know if you're a good couple? <laughs> no, I'm, Imagine, I don't know if he beats her. I'm not going to tell you. Just sat in the audience going, I can't, I can't enjoy this moment of him proposing. <laughs> I just can't because what if he... Doesn't always put the bins out on time. Yeah. What, what if I doesn't? need to see your Instagram post for the last two years. <laughs> yeah. But on. I just feel like it, I, I get the gesture, but is it a bit cringy to be like, hey, we did it in a comedy club. And I feel like it can be the same with like, oh my God, announcing the the pregnancy. Did you see the, the proposal video recently that went viral of the, the black fella at the petrol station? That was so bad. It's horrendous. Have you seen it? Horrendous. What? 
So he he got the police yes. to pull guns on him and be like, on the floor, on the floor, on the floor. On the floor. On the, f- on the floor. Give me the money, man. I kick you in the fizz. <laughs> So he got his mate, who was a policeman. He got the busies. Who was, a, who was a white policeman. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah. that's To fun. be like, get on the floor, get on the floor. And his missus is going, I'm his wife, I'm his wife. Please don't shoot him. He's a good person. And then as he got on the floor, he went, you marry me? And it was a big thing. A big but setup. she was already his wife. Yeah. She did say, I'm his wife. Did she, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Lying bitch. Because saying, I'm his girlfriend. I'm his bed. They're more likely to shoot you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> He's not... <laughs> He's not into they don't commitment, take it, pow. They don't take it as seriously. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I reckon so, that was so So the banter was, right, I want to do something big. This is even worse than the comedy club one, which I think is cringy. This is so bad, it's hilarious. <laughs> He's gone. Now, there's obviously a massive threat being a black man in America at the moment with police brutality, police shootings. I mean, literally a massive cultural shift, huge protest, the pr- president getting involved. Black people are genuinely scared for their lives if they get pulled over by a white policeman. I know what I'll do. I'll ring Phil from the local precinct and we will have quite the time. But he gets like a round of applause from like yeah. the whole courtyard and she's like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's like, it's fucking weird. It's horrendous. Imagine if the gun had gone off. Yeah. I imagine they weren't loaded. You know what I mean? Would you no, risk it? They're defo loaded. They're policemen. Yeah. You imagine if, if, if someone just came into <laughs> what, what they're like police captain would say if at that moment when they were doing the banter like Wee! someone dr- drove up and like started shooting <laughs> yeah. at the police and like oh we're not loaded we're doing a proposal <laughs> like if they were loaded I think they have to be loaded don't they I mean, safety they're, on maybe they're always but- loaded and ready to go aren't they in America alright yeah Carl if you, if you were carrying right. a gun you'd have it loaded wouldn't you, <coughs> and it, you like, would. a, the old Bill Bear bit is like you know he'd keep it locked and loaded in, in his top drawer and his missus has like read that you you keep the the barrel in the living room, <laughs> the bullets. So what am I gonna fucking chase around the house? <laughs> Where's Where the, the scope? Bu- it's in the living room. He's in the living room. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah. He's in the living room. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't do. Don't over bake it. If you found out you're pregnant, there's nothing got wrong with like. Listen, you've got working dick and balls, and you've put it right there. No, I would get. What would you go for? Like when they want like a football manager out of a football club and they get a plane to go over like Old Trafford. <laughs> and play a girl. Yeah. Instead of Wenger out, it's yeah. baby in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get a plane. And then like maybe get a parachute to jump out of it. Right. A baby. Like, holding a sign saying, this is for you, by the way. Because maybe she'd see it and be like, Wow, you've really doubled down on the security of her finding this out, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's you, a plane <laughs> with a sign, yeah. which it usually flies quite low so you can seal the sign, but you're like, no, but- she might not be concentrating because she's <laughs> distracted. I'll get a parachute guy to jump out dangerously low to the ground to be like, did you miss it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a common name though, isn't it? What? I think, oh, it might be another one. Might be yeah. another Sam. Right. It, no, it, it's you. Yeah. It's you, I'd get another. Way. I'd get another plane. Another plane. Sam, we're <laughs> pregnant. And then she'd be like, oh, God. That's also like a name that could be a girl or a guy. Who knows who that is? And then another plane. No. No, babe. You. you. <laughs> like, you oh, if God. you're thinking it's you, do you know what I'd do? I'd commit a crime. So when I was pregnant and then let the news do it. Let the news do it? And he's pregnant as a well. A pregnant man. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, yeah, look. What's shot himself. Oh. I wouldn't shoot myself. I'd shoot someone else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That went Carl, right to its natural end there, didn't Carl, it? <laughs> Carl went a little bit dark with that one. I'd, I'd kill someone. And then they'd be like, oh, there was a pregnant murderer today. Like, oh, I'm going to be a parent. Mm. Single parent. Um, Yeah, so I just keep it. There's nothing wrong with just keeping it on the fairway. Ah, you go don't big. be a cheesy cunt if you don't. And like, unless there's that, that special thing that you've got going. It's like the the finding out the sex of a baby. When the, the when they're pregnant and there's like the cannons and it's blue or yeah. pink. Did you hear the story in America where one of them exploded and killed grandma? <laughs> I am not even joking. They have these cannons and they were like, it's a girl though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one and in, one out. It it it's either pink or blue, and that's how you know. Gender reveal. And it exploded early. The gender reveal, and there was a bit of metal in the thing because it was some cheap shit made by China. And it exploded, 
lodged in fucking grandma's head and she was deared. Heavy? Yeah. Don't you wish you'd just got a fucking picture of a dick and balls out and be like, it's a boy. A dick and balls? I don't know, you know. Here's a dick pic. You know what that means, don't you? <laughs> Here's a baby Pregnant. dick pic. <laughs> With a boy. I'm not joking. When you go for the sex scan, that is all you're looking for on a fucking computer screen is a dick and balls. You're just there with a professional going, and here's the head, and that's really healthy. Do you know what it is yet? Are you finding out? And then we're just going to move around here. Like, that's it, two legs and arms looking, baby's looking really good. And and then I'm finding myself just going, balls, balls. No, no, that's just, that's dick. You're literally looking for a dick and balls. I've just realized what I would do. Right. Flash mob. You know, like dancing on that. Is this to announce your pregnancy? Yeah. All right, okay. Do a flash mob. In like Great flash mob, by the way. <laughs> you can see that you are... You know when you think you're the best at everything? Yeah. You're not a good dancer, are you? Just loads of people do. Adam, you're not, are you? <laughs> be honest, because it'd be so great to see you just climb down on one thing ever. Depends what type of dance you're on about. Dancing. With, you know, rhythm... Moving rhythmically to a beat. You, I mean... Flash mob. Yeah, that's just the start, though, and I haven't really got Is into it. Is it the start? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You know, Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer did uh, like a like a dance challenge thing. Yeah. I I'd smash you off the face of the earth with that shit. That's yeah, mate. Well, flash mob. You wouldn't even notice it was a flash mob. No, but there'd be thousands of us. Just going. Thousands of you, <laughs> all doing a shit dance. How does that say? Is it's that not a baby? Is that? <laughs> like, well, it's like a, it, I'm, I'm, a festival of people with head trauma. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to come up with a good dance <laughs> on the spot in it with God, no so music many playing. people have been in car crashes in West Derby. Do the footballer baby dance? Yeah. We can Fashion do that dance. one. Can do that one. Romario. Hey, yeah. No, I can, I can bust. <laughs> 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 What is it? <laughs> you look like you're fucking moving the water in the bath. Got a fucking bit of hot, bit of cold. <laughs> Get it down, put it away, bring it forward, take it back. I like it. I can move a bit. <laughs> you're still pissed, you should be able to dance better than this. What's wrong with that? You look like you're putting a shirt on, it doesn't fit. <laughs> Fuck it, get ready for Adam's flash mob. Never mind the tour. <laughs> you could be one of a thousand people go. <laughs> Do the tab pole. How does that announce pregnancy in any way? Oh, yeah. at the end of it. I go, oh, we're pregnant, by the way, babe. <laughs> All right. No, I'd write it into the song. Oh, the singing as well? How would that go? Song. What? <laughs> We're pregnant. <laughs> you squirted on my sores. In my open paws. Do the bathtub. <laughs> well, that's next month. Maybe August. No. I guess Finn to write the song. Oh. Yeah. Laura's gone Cause we're pregnant, <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> we're, we're pregnant So don't worry Cause there's still the same amount of people in our lives Now that I've I got a lot to work with Yeah Yeah I'm ready yeah. Bored eh Just bored so you thought you'd write a song If yeah. anyone doesn't know what we're talking about By the way Finn has written a song Called Laura's Gone And it was posted on Patreon So if you are a Patreon Go and check that out, and if you're oh, not... we should whack it on at the end, shouldn't we? No? You can if you want. Should we whack it on at the end? Yeah. It, it is original. It's not a cover, is it? No. No, it's not a cover, is it? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know it's not a can cover. Pull off the adverts on YouTube? I know, but you know it's not a cover. Why did you go, it's not a... It's it's Is called it? Laura's Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it? Uh, is it Kings of Leon? <laughs> no, it's The Killers. Is it? Just checking, is it a cover? <laughs> what are you on about? Could, you know it's not a cover. It could have just been it's a It's called song. Laura's Gun. <laughs> it could have just been a song that just happens to fit really well with what we do on this. Right. Yeah. It could have been. I think he's doing a, a, a joke, isn't he? Oh, uh, is he? Oh, for fuck's sake. Remember? You can't play 
<laughs> it's I'm, difficult I'm though. It's difficult though because you play <laughs> possum sometimes, and then other times you say thick things. It's real. One of the lines, Adam. <laughs> It's moved to Mozambique and she's taking the kids. Yeah, I know. Now I'm, Dan's sat in one corner oh with dear. the lids. And you, there was, a, there, was, there was a good 30 seconds there where you believed that I thought the Rolling Stones did that first. <laughs> we have both said stupid enough shit that it is conceivable that you were having a brain fart at that, at that moment. <laughs> little clones, though. Had, I, a lo- had a lot of support for the little clones comment. Thanks for everyone I, I who's on my side. Just... Uh, just stop you there. One, just raising some money for UNICEF. Can I just check before we cut? They're little clones. They're two clones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> On with your day. When I do my dance video, I'm going to get two little mini me's dancing with me. They're going to be my little clones. I felt under pressure there to, to actually do a You move. were taking the piss out of yeah. my dancer. What's that? I realised that as soon as I did that, I was like, oh God, this is going to be good. Mm. And when you sat here, there's no way of... What am I doing? Boss and a move. Yeah. Can you boss moves? Can you boss moves? Oh. I feel like he can. I feel like you boss a move. You can boss a move out. Yeah? Yeah. Good dancer. What's your favourite move? <sighs> I just go with the music, man. I'm more of a sort of interpretive dance kind Freestyler. of Freestyler. Yeah. Just, you know the... Um, I love a kick, me. A kick? <laughs> a kick, yeah. Come on. Come oh. on. Come on. Did you just do that for everyone <laughs> behind a desk? Just <laughs> It was just for me. Like, like, it was sort of like on a... Yeah. That, it? yeah. that, that was like a little stage. A little stage You're a great though. finger dancer. <laughs> <laughs> little stage, huh? A little, st- little buster. Dan, I've heard you're more of a act out the lyrics dancer. I don't uh, don't know how you dare to say that. You're not that now. How dare you? I act out the lyrics. That's how you dance, innit? That's how you get the song across with your dance moves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't My call me. Will Go on. That's what she's doing, isn't yeah. she? My heart will go on. Like yeah. over there. Yeah. This flash what about fla- this flash mob's gonna be dog <laughs> shit, isn't it? What about I'm still standing by Elton John? It's How just literally just How would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking like a like right, survivor. we need a dance off. We need some, I need. I don't know when we can do this, but <clears throat> I'd absolutely smash the flaps off you. Do you reckon? Yeah. I yeah, yeah. Would. What? Just dance. Play the game. Like the, you know the little. Da, 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 no, no, I'm not doing that stupid thing. That's for um, Kore- that's for Korean children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, that's <laughs> the only way for for it to be objectively judged, isn't it? No, I think we'd it's have to get... a subjective thing. Like, what I think we have think to get a good panel. I might be there like, that shit, you need to get a bit of this in. <laughs> Do the bathtub. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like, to me, this is good. And it, there's no, like, official way to mark that. You could have a seizure and you'd be like, I fucking nailed that seizure. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Who's to say? Dan, would isn't... you ever go on Strictly Come Dancing or Dance on Ice? No. You got big enough. Why? Because that is, th- that's not the type of dancing that I'm talking about. I'm talking about get, getting pissed and then using supplements to be like, I can feel the music and watch my fucking moves. You know, I'm not talking about having a dance with some fucking Polish hottie that's wearing way too much makeup. You really lent on that Polish then? Polish. The some fucking Polish. Can I drop the P Saved bomb? it with hottie. Pole. I, I, actually, I've, having done like some of that ballroom dancing like with one of my ex-girlfriends, fuck me, it's hard work. And then you're like under pressure and you get like sweaty palms and you just feel like a bell end. And especially on Strictly Come Dancing when someone's amazing and you know they're like, in the head they're like, oh, you're doing so well. No, keep going, Dan. <laughs> Why does and it sound like a male? That's waiter? my Polish, that's my Polish hottie. Say that again. They're all, they're nearly all foreign. The dancers on Strictly Come Dancing, aren't that they? That was Polish, yeah, though, because yeah. it sounded it's, like it's... Chinese. It sounded like a Chinese fella who'd spend time in Italy. You're doing really good, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd hate it. It's way too much pressure. And then also, you've got to be really cheesy and supportive of the other dancers. Mm. I watched Ramsey on it because I just couldn't stop watching Ramsey on that. 
because Ramsey's someone that I know when I knew when he started and everything, and he's done great. But it was just you have to stop being a comedian. You have to be like, hey, we're all a team and everyone's doing really well. And, oh, we've tried so hard with the dance. I just wanted to do it for Katia or whoever you're dancing with. And it's the same shit from fucking everyone. And there's basically some like borderline special needs former MP who's like the span spanner one who's John like, Pascal. oh my God, look, he's not shat himself. He's done really well. And then there's the there's like the, the girl from Emmerdale who was a professional dancer for four years before she got into soaps rugby player or cricket player and they're player. always shit hot but there's always like oh like, like some idiot but he wouldn't be like nice Ed Balls he wouldn't be nice it looks like a fucking nightmare and then you show the rehearsals like and this is what they've been doing all week in some studio in West London fuck off I'd be, get, I'd be like mate I'm so bored of dancing I'll just get it on the night I'll have half a pill we'll work <laughs> it out Oh, Ladies and gents, that. dancing to My Heart Will Go On. Dan and Katia. <laughs> Strictly on ecstasy. <laughs> That'd be a well better programme. Yeah. Just yeah. give a load of people who've like not been on a night out in a while because they've had kids, like a bag of pills each. And we'll judge that. Yeah. Be well better. And then Kat, me, me just trying to like talk to Katia. Like, right, Kat, you're right. <laughs> you meant to be dancing, Dan. Never mind that, never mind that. You look amazing for your age. Do you know that? Amazing. She's 78, Cat her? Daily. Not, not Cat Daily. What's she called? Don't mean Cat Daily. Test Daily. Test Daily, Daily that's what I mean. Um, what are we calling? Um, so what on, you want it? Dancing, dancing on, on Gaddies. Dancing on Gaddies. <laughs> dancing on Gaddies. That's exactly what it'd be. Dancing on Gaddies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it'd be the judges. Craig <laughs> Rebel Home. Bez from the Happy Mondays. Goldie. <laughs> Sean Ryder. Sean Ryder. You can't have Bez and Sean. No, only have one. Goldie. Yeah. Yeah. Bez. Mate. Goldie. Goldie. And uh, El Chapo. El Chapo. <laughs> El Chapo. Yeah. Reese fans. You know the one from um Say that again. the first state. Oh. But in character as the scouser. Yeah. You love that film. Drugs, Mr. McElroy. Drugs are our mates. He loves them. So. He's Simba. Dancing on Gary's. That's an ITV production, isn't it? Yeah. Let's be honest. I don't think the BBC are touching. I think, ITV will yeah. commission any dog I shit. It's more Channel 5, isn't it? I think Dancing on Gary's on Ice is the natural <laughs> progression. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got laser blades, blades on my shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do them. Just on the ice. Fucking works. Oh, that's all this move. Moving. Have you watched Strictly Come Dancing? Does that? No, am I wrong? It looks fucking horrible. It just—it's not my type of telly. That I—I I don't mind no, watching. Cork, the it's not my type of telly, is it? I've just got a missus who watches Strictly, and since the Panny D has been a thing, all of a sudden I've seen more of it. Do you watch stuff with Laura when you don't like it and she wants to watch it? No, but sometimes it's—you've just got to be like. She watches stuff, and then you end up watching it because you can't always be in separate rooms. Like I don't want to watch this. I, I want to watch something else. Like, it's fine. If she wants to watch, like, if my missus wants to watch, like, Made in Chelsea, I actually sort of get into that one a little bit. Uh, I just quite like watching posh people just be posh. I it used to be like, great. We used to we used yeah. to watch it, didn't we? Years no, ago. I, like, I can't, Towie, can't she watches that. that, and I just sit there, just like... Oh, no, we watch uh, Towie spin-offs. Um, the one with Baby Paul. Watch the fucking... Amy Childs. She's got like a sister, and there's two of them. The baby diaries or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not even Towie. It's boring Towie. Yep. We used to be interesting. Now I've got babies. Baby Paul's got reflux. It's a fucking nightmare. Mm. Paul doesn't want to do any dad work. Oh, nightmare. How the fuck is that on like That's the fifth really, series? Really good accent, that. Yeah. Why that was it? fantastic to Jesus watch. Jesus Christ, it's boring. It's not even the original Towie. It's the spin-off where they're just like, oh, I've had a really sleepless night. Do you remember oh, when they, they released a trailer oh. for a Scouse one? It was called This Is Liverpool. And it never even got yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Because, like, remember Desperate Scouse everyone in Liverpool went, no. Right. That looks horrendous, and it's just going to make every stereotype about the city amplified. Fuck off. Then there was a Cheshire one, Living on the Edge, Alderly Edge. Didn't work out. My auntie used to run a pub there. <laughs> Did David Beckham go? David Beckham went, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brooklyn Beckham was yeah. fourth. I'm not. I just think the reality's, reality show stuff is, it's, is it's pretty brutal. It's the stuff brutal. to put on him after work and not have to 
use your brain in any way. Like the soaps. How I met your mother and friends are that for me. And the so- no, I mean, like for all the people, like the soaps and shit like that. Mm. You just put on and go, all oh, right. Yeah, fair enough. You don't learn anything, do you? That's fair enough. I've got some sort of fluff TV that I kind of like. Would you do Strictly Come Dancing? Yeah. It's a massive career thing. I, my attitude has always been, I will do whatever sells me more tour tickets. I don't necessarily think the clientele of Strictly would all like my work. No. I would love to watch you on Strictly because you've just got to be nicey-nice, supportive. You've got to just, like, everyone plays the same role. Ramsey did it. Sean Walsh did it, and obviously that had issues, but that was not on the show. <laughs> Got himself in a little bit of trouble with his dance partner, but, you know, and he's suffered for that along the way. Pretty awesome. pretty fucking unfairly, to be fair. Um, you have to be like, you know, just really trying, and I just want to make Katy proud. He's doing very well. Like, I would love <laughs> to see you... Dancing with Bob. ...see your ass. When you couldn't do some weird like tap dancing move, that's a good move. Like that. On Thursday, Adam and Katia had a bit of an issue. I've seen you because you're very good at the adverts. When you have to do do it to camera, I've got no ability to remember stuff and then re say it. It's fucking painful. And the more people are watching, the more pressure's on. When you have lost it with an advert, it's very entertaining mm-hmm. to watch you in a studio in West London lose your shit because you didn't cut, couldn't do a fucking kick change or something. Oh, that'd I told be amazing. you, I've got me kicks. I can do a kick change, whatever that is. Yeah. 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 And I bring this to Strictly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every single week. Every that single week, me. I'd start like this. <laughs> now doing the tango. <laughs> Adam refuses to learn a new dance move. He just does this. We're not even going to make it out of first week. He's going to lose to fucking former member of parliament who has... Mental illness. <laughs> John Prescott. Yeah, I reckon I'd do all right. I reckon, give me six weeks. Yeah. I'd win it. Okay. Even though it's 12 weeks long, the <laughs> series, it gets us like week six, me, Adam's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> rap. Uh, <laughs> I think I'd do it. I think I'd smash it. No, I would do it. I would. I'd, I'd, do, any, I'd do any show like that. As you wouldn't. Man. You wouldn't do any show like that. Come Robot on, Wars? Man. Would you do Robot Wars? I tried to do Robot Wars when I was a kid. <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> we all know. What? <laughs> there is a line that you wouldn't do, surely. Come on. You wouldn't do Dancing on Ice. Of course I would. Oh, that's Adam. better. No, it's worse. Hang it's on. so bad. What are you talking about? This is terrible people, television. People pay to go ice skating. I just get to go ice skating for free for weeks. Oh, it'd be fucking awful. Basically, what you've just asked me there, basically, is do I want a black car for Alton Towers? It's the same thing. Do you know what I mean? I can't believe you'd do that. Of course I not. think the reality would kick in. I'd do Bake Off. Oh, yeah. 100%. I'd do Ready, Steady, Cook. Celebrity Bake Off's a doddle, though, isn't it? You just go, even if you shit, like, ah, he's a comedian. <laughs> can't do a fucking sponge to save his life and everyone's like hey. cake, then, <laughs> I nearly said flange I nearly flange. said flange Flan. I nearly said flange my first like type of cake that came into my head was like flange can't do a flange to save his life what That's do I mean a flan flan yeah it's yeah. really is not really cake. funny that you brought that up <laughs> this is 100% true on my Facebook memories yesterday I'd put a, a, a thing on uh, as a status when I lived with my auntie Carol my auntie Carol's great you, like you'd love her because she's just she just doesn't it's sort of like what we do on this. If you think something, it's now public information. It just comes out of their mouth. I, I kind of love those people. They're brutal, but we sat on the couch one day and Jeremy Kyle was on, and just neither of us watching it, just like nothing to do. And she went, "Never liked the word flange, you know." And I went, "What?" She went, "I don't like it." And I went, "Why have you brought that up?" She was like, "It just come to me head. I really don't like it." And I went, "Why?" And she went, "Because to this day, I don't know whether it's a cake or me fanny." <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Answers on a postcard. Uh. <laughs> FYI, if you whip out a flange on the Celebrity Bake Off, it will do really well on the old social media retweets. Everyone's made tiramisu, but Adam's got his flange out. Uh, let's have a l- <laughs> let's have a little break, and then we'll, we'll be back. Yep. 
Mirror, mirror, on the wall, what's the best brand for products that help you shave your balls? It is, of course, the products available at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com are one of the sponsors for the Have A Weird podcast, and we absolutely fucking love them. Why is that? Because they have revolutionised the male grooming game. That's why, okay? Have a little look in your kex right now. I bet your pubes are disgusting. I bet they're horrible. But if you had the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 to help you shave down there with its little light on it and its battery life that lasts two hours and the fact you can use it in the shower because it's waterproof. If you had all that, you'd be able to trim your pubes a bit better, wouldn't you? Now look at your nose. See those nose ears? Imagine you had the Manscaped Weed Whacker and you could just stick it up and it does all that for you. And you know that because of the premium technology that goes into the Manscaped products, you're not going to snag the bag. No more bleedy balls. Exactly. You need to go to manscaped.com right now. Get yourself the Weed Whacker, the Lawn Mower 3.0. Get yourself some ball deodorant. Get yourself some ball wipes. Or get all of them as part of a bundle. And on top of that, listen to this. If you use the promo code WORD, that's W-O-R-D, you get 20% off your entire order and free worldwide shipping. Free shipping, 20% off, and you get to get your balls looking all neat and tidy. And maybe your beard will suck it off a bit more often. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Back to the pod. Oh. Oh, that was horrible in my ears. Not, not enjoyable. It's You're not like man. sounds like that now? You're not into like a... I'm not bothered by them, but that is not a enjoyable experience particularly. Are you a chewer? Like, do you hate people who chew? <gasps> oh, one of the worst sounds of my life. You know, like, it's just made me remember the sound of my dad chewing a Sunday roast when I you was told a kid. told me this before, yeah. Oh, the sound, sa- like, you know when you're like, because when you're a kid, your dad seems huge. Yeah. Like, they just look big. And he's just watching the fucking, like, giant portions of Sunday roast. And then he was always about manners, my dad. Because I think his mum had been quite strict with him. And you always eat with your mouth closed. And you're like, you should be eating in another fucking room, you horrible eat big. Door closed. <laughs> what? You have like a tumble dryer of just horrible noises. Polystyrene's my noise. Would it bother you what? if I masturbated right in your ear? Is it, I mean, it's a separate <laughs> It's a separate sound issue. One was like a horrible nostalgia thing. The other is sexual assault, innit? What noise does it make? Assault, if if touching, you're going to wank into my ear, is that going on Patreon? No, I, I don't or mean... public episode. I don't want to come in your ear. I just mean, like, right next to so like, you'd be facing that line. I don't think the sound would be the and issue. I'd just be like... Doesn't make... What sound your dick makes? It doesn't make that sound, though, does it? it does or do you make the sound... Or do you what, what? <laughs> baby blood on it. I honestly thought you said baby blood, then. <laughs> baby blood? <laughs> <laughs> Not even... Not oh, been baby blood, then. That's exactly it's, what it sounds like. It's... Classic bullshit of wanking. When I'm wanking, like that is honestly. What have you got? Trench dick. <laughs> Taking on water around the crotch. Yeah, no, I always, uh, I always masturbate, but there's a bit of flooding down there. No, but if you put like a bit of like lubrication or <laughs> the French, fat, the French lubrication, uh, that makes it sound spaffy, doesn't it? Like, hmm. Yeah. If you were doing that near my ear, <laughs> the sound wouldn't be all of the problem. But would the sound be a problem? It'd be one of a few problems. <laughs> right, okay. I just I don't know what you like. I don't know you that well, even a year in. Do you know what I mean? You know me well enough though, don't you? I think you've got an inkling. Is that fair to say? I think you know me both professionally and personally would to you know that I had an you with me why would I be sat down and you'd be stood up like sit down, Dan? <laughs> Let's see if this freaks you out. Uh, don't be that- a weirdo. Let me finish. But like you've just told me that you don't you wouldn't like him. If I'd have just done it, that would have been worse, wouldn't it? It's better that I ask. Yeah, what consent? Yeah, yeah. You said no, so I won't do it. You are such a gentleman. <laughs> you always believe in. You're such a big believer in consent. You for you, no, don't wank near my ear means no. Yeah, no means no, especially when it's like wanking in Morals. your mate's ear. I'll always just check before I do something in case you know, in case it's going to bother you. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't knock them. That's nice. It I'll is. never set your house on fire without checking what you first. See if you want it on fire. Top bloke. Yeah. Top Just bloke. a good lad. Just it's good etiquette, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I won't stick my dick in your exhaust pipe of your car without checking with you first. <laughs> you can't promise that, can you? No. You might not know he's done it. That big old BMW. Stupid start to this section. 
Uh, Harry Robinson. Do does shag cars? Ha- yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harry Robinson. Okay. <laughs> In unison. Harry, yeah. Harry Robinson. It is impossible to not do something we've done before on the pod. It's borderline impossible because we've done a shagging cars bit. Have we? Yeah. Have we, yeah? We've talked about people who like want to fuck cars. Oh, yeah, and you shag roller coasters, isn't there? <laughs> oh, yeah. People like get married. It's like four fiestas and that. Yeah. It's fucking mental. Like, I know it's not nice to sort of laugh at people, right? But they are some of the stupidest cunts in the world, aren't they? When they're yeah. like, I fell in love with this lamppost. Yeah. It's mine now. Got, See, got that's, when, that's when mental illness is fun, isn't it? Yeah. That's when you're allowed to have a laugh at it. Yeah. If you marry a 1987 Ford Cortina, <laughs> come on. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Guys, come on. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> what would you marry? <laughs> yeah, what would you marry? If you had to marry a non-human, non-animal. <laughs> Non-element. Idiot. If you had to marry a non-human, non-animal, because damn, you love otters, don't you? You'd love a sea otter wife. <laughs> Where would she live? Down in the squelchy bit. You've got it. You've got to marry an inanimate object. If you fuck an otter, it's going to sound like that, isn't it? Mm. And also, like, if you've got to marry an inanimate object, yeah, a bed, a bed, a couch, I think, a couch or a bed. It's easier to shag a couch than a bed. Why are we shagging it? Oh, yeah, we are shagging it, I suppose, aren't you? <coughs> You're not going to marry something you don't want to I fuck. already do a lot of sexual things within that sort of bed frame, so, you know, that feels appropriate. Mm. Yeah. My garden office. I'd fucking marry that garden office right now. Um, yeah. Not a car. A bouncy castle. Yeah. This is my wife, the bouncy castle. <laughs> Are you showing bit, it to? Bit dodgy with a bouncy castle in it, because it's essentially a child's play area. Yeah, I'm married to this and we make love, but you know, not on a Sunday afternoon anymore because I've had that go wrong. And it is a child's play area if they want it enough. Shoes off, dicks away. <laughs> Adam's bouncy castle. Chernobyl. Yeah. Try and find a dry bit. <laughs> Addy Robinson. <laughs> Shall I just do silly ones? Because I don't think we're in the, we are literally got the... I don't think we've got the mental capacity today to do uh, serious ones. No, I have. I have. Um, you have? Yeah. I don't think you have. Sam Maguire says, oh, dear, dear. Come on, Dan. Um, Sam Maguire says, if you had to be undercover cops for six months, what would your name and backstory be? So, shout out to Sam Maguire, who's, who is fucking amazing. He's the goat. I love goats. him. But if you had to go undercover for six months, yeah, what would you do? Draymond Weatherby. Draymond Weatherby. Draymond Weatherby. You know, I think up. that's kind of what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word, but I think using the word Draymond. Because yeah. your undercover name <laughs> yeah. kind of works against the fact that you're undercover. Why? Because you don't look like your name's Draymond. I'll make myself look like I do. Like it, like it is. How are you going to do that? Use your imagination. <laughs> Put a hat on. Yeah. If you had to be an undercover cop for six <laughs> months, <laughs> your name would be Draymond Weatherby. <laughs> <laughs> you get caught in the first hour. <laughs> caught? <laughs> Caught like by the, the by name's the not the important bit. There's like, I just don't know how would you even say, I don't know, understand why Sam's gone for cop, like, because we are not policemen in any way, so we would be the worst. <laughs> Although, <laughs> do you know what? We're not, you're right, yeah, you are right, but we've ever in got any, no way is anyone in this room a policeman, you're right? But we haven't, we have not, we actually could be amazing undercover people because no one would think those fucking idiots that do a podcast are, are policemen, yeah. Until they air this episode, and now they're like, "Oh!" But if you had to go into witness relocation, yeah, what would you do? I'd witness relocation. Where would you ask to go? Oh, oh, where? Oh, where and what? Because they, you, you know, you get a obviously you want to be Draymond Weatherby, mm-hmm. but where would you go? So you get done for um, 
His dick's too big. Yeah, for getting your dick out and trying to bonk your wife, who is a bouncy castle. <laughs> and because that happens, yeah. I get to go into witness protection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you testify against, you know, a, a bigger bouncy castle paedophile ring. Because <laughs> Hillary Clinton was renting out bouncy castles around the Merseyside area. Mm. Yeah. So I go into witness protection. Where's uh, Draymond? Where Hawaii, isn't it? She goes to Hawaii. Yeah. In the UK. <laughs> it sounds like. Merseyside police are going to be like, right, you're going in with witness relocation. Where do you want to go? Mauritius. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know you do, lad. <laughs> want to where's, be a millionaire in Mauritius. Where's nice in the world? I tell you what, here at Merseyside Police, we really go that extra mile for anyone we're putting in witness relocation. Are you telling me that if I bust open an international Hillary Clinton ran bouncy castle paedophile ring? Yeah. That mazy side police are gonna handle that case. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Liverpool. It's our case. Fuck you, FBI. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <coughs> I'd go to uh, somewhere nice and hot. I don't I say that. I like going somewhere off for like a couple of weeks. I don't know whether I'd wanna live like three quarters of a mile from the surface of the sun. Do you know what I mean? I wish I'd done it at some point in my youth. I got, I got, I found comedy too early, and then I was like, ah, I'm on the. I just want to do this. People keep giving me more cash than I'd get. Like I, by 24, I was getting more cash than all my mates were a week to go and have a fucking laugh. So at what point was I going to live abroad? But I would have, I would have. I've looked back now and go, should have just given it a fucking go for a bit. I'd be tempted to live in New York for a bit. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, or LA, just to roll the old career dice. But I, I wouldn't want to move to, like, fucking Spain. You know, and like just those... be one of the barbacks and, or, or one of the promo people in, like, Benidorm. That's the obvious choice. My missus lasted eight days and started having kidney failure and just came home because she had, like, a, a panic attack hangover. She was going to go, uh, what's the one in, is it Cyprus? Is it Ayanapa? Yeah. She she managed about a week and a half in Ayanapa. Her and a mate went out and they were like 19. This Laura? Yeah. And she drank every night for like eight days and just had that cumulative hangover. You know, when you like can't function, but she just kept drinking through it. And she said uh, when she got home, her mum was like really upset because her eyes were going a bit yellow. <laughs> you know, when people have just been hitting the booze, hitting them. Not, it's not hangover eyes. I tell you who looked like this. Rob Mulholland about five years ago at the Fringe. Yeah, yeah, We saw Rob Mulholland towards the end of the Fringe. And I, Rob Mulholland is one of those mates where you're like, you want him to get into some sort of injury-based, like, hijinks. Because <laughs> it's like, ah, fuck you, Rob. Like, at my wedding, when he basically went feral, lost a car, lost a girlfriend, and was released back into the wild for for two days. It's funny. Rob's one of those, those guys that you want awful things to happen to. Because you know he can handle it. And it makes a funny anecdote. And it's Rob. You're like, ah, fuck off. It's Mulholland. I saw him. He was so grey in the eyes. I just, my instinct was like, we need to get you out of this bar. We need to feed you. You know, like you see videos of people doing relief work in Africa and they're like, why is this small child You did it on the starving? Royal Mile. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then they've like adopted the kid. Like here, 10 years later, it's I adopted him and now he's 13. He looks really well. I wanted to do that with Rob Mulholland. Like, I need to take you to a safe place. We need to get you well. He'd gone grey in the eyes. He just looked fucked. Uh, Laura had a bit of that going on. So that living abroad, not really the abroad you want to do, is it? That's That was never the, the only, one. I, I, I quite like Liverpool. And I think, you know, I, I, I often consider myself quite lucky that I was born in... A good city. Imagine being born in like fucking oh, Preston, Hartford. Why, why do you always say that? Like I don't. Yeah, because I was born in Preston, which is the other cultural capital of the north. Imagine being born where you were born, Dan. Yeah, Adam. <laughs> what you do is move yeah. around and leave. Yeah, I just couldn't be asked for somewhere like Rotherham or something. It'd have to be an improvement on Liverpool, and that's New York for me. And London shit. Yeah, London is shit. Like so I, night out, a night out in London is dog shit. I like London for a week. Max, like three, four, five days, ideally. Yeah, then you're done. And then I'm like, I want to just not have quite this many people. Well, New York is as busy. It isn't. Well, if you, <laughs> you're going to London to go to the busy places, New York isn't quiet. 
Grand no, Central it, Station it, is as busy as Houston. New York's pretty busy, Mel. <laughs> Not as busy as London, in my experience. Right. Like, Times Square is, yeah, and Broadway. But, like, other than that, not really. Like, certainly when I was there, it was just, it was a slightly busier Liverpool. That's what it felt like to me. Imagine if you moved to New York and then what we're going to do with the pod, me in Runcorn. I remember, that. have you heard of the Bugle that Andy Zaltzman did with John Oliver? It was a really popular podcast Started about 10 years ago, and it it did amazing numbers. It was one of the first podcasts I listened to, and Zaltzman and John Oliver had obviously started together. And then John Oliver got the gig on The Daily Show. Mm-hmm. Is it The Daily Show that he did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his, his career's just skyrocketed since then. Amazing. And Zaltzman and John Oliver did so, like shows together. They were like a double double headers. They were like a, a writing, writing duo. So they did their own stand-up, but they also did shows together. They were fucking brilliant. And it was sad because on the Bugle, you just literally, it was the audio version of someone career, someone's career going fucking great and someone else's career going fine. <laughs> so if you move to New York, everyone would be like, fucking lad, he's done so well. Adam's living in fucking Brooklyn. Amazing. And they still do have a word. They just do it on Zoom every <laughs> week. It's amazing. Adam's found like a studio in Brooklyn and he goes down. He actually he shares it with fucking Chris Stefano. They've gone in <laughs> half and half. Yeah. Where's Dan? Still in wrong <laughs> Getting bitched about by fucking knobheads who work. I'm like, I can't move electric. Oh. We already have. Oh, God. Yeah. Twice. So if you move to New York, you've got to take me with you. Laura, Dan's gone. <laughs> Where? With Adam. Laura's coming. Just because I, I it cannot be a podcast that's half in New York and half in Runcorn. <laughs> Wouldn't you move your family to New York? Because <sighs> I've got problems with my sleep. Um, I, I've moved to a village in Cheshire because I, I like the fact you get a bit of space. I and need it's to Buffalo. Chilled then. out. What? Buffalo, like upstate New York. Upstate right? New York. Yeah. Right. You just have to commute in. Yeah. It was it was amazing what you did there because you were like, oh, upstate New York, but then you picked a city mm-hmm. in upstate New York rather than the rest of upstate New York, which is just countryside. Oh, right. Why don't you move to another city, upstate New York? I you mean know. just upstate? I'll just move upstate New York, yeah. Yeah. There you go. There's space yeah. there, And it? just commute in. Yeah. Yeah. Smash them. Have a word, New York, coming very, very soon. Great, wouldn't it? Where would you? Have to I'd, move to. Yeah, obviously, I'd happily move to New York. I think Austin's where it's at, podcast wise, though, isn't it, boys? Should we not be part of Texas? Yeah. It would be the weirdest move if we went from, after all of the shit that we've gone Texas to scam, if we went wrong corn to Texas. I would like to live in Texas, you know. I, I would like. I'd, I reckon I'd fit in there. How do we make that work? Like, you know. <laughs> You're done. That's all you need. You would. You would. You give off big dick cowboy vibes, I think. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Plus, you love oil and farmers. Woo! <laughs> that's it. You love farmers. That's what <laughs> you make. The that's what Texas people do. Do you Texas? What? What? Oh! That's the application for. <laughs> you test how good you are at doing that. Welcome to Texas. Can you do with the Texas accent? <laughs> woo! <Woo-woo! laughs> okay. Okay. Austin, Texas, motherfucker. From Roncon, Austin. We gonna run this shit in six fucking weeks. Yeah. We're always six <laughs> weeks from greatness. Woo-woo! <laughs> Woo! That's how they talk. Dream on, Welby. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> There's a microphone. Back in the motherfucking day when I was <laughs> eating some... Uh, Corn on a cob. Back in the motherfucking day. With, with my grandma. Dream on. Where are you right now? Are you Texas? Are you Austin, in Texas? Austin, Texas. Oh, y'all, y'all are in Ow. Texas now. Yes. This is Adam. Uh, Finlay, could you get me uh, the, the flag, the one star Lone State flag? Thank you, honey. Oh, yeah, we've got it. Come on, Dream on. Cut me wide open. I bleed these colors. You're black. Why are Woo! you black? Do a Texas act. White Texas. Cut me open. I bleed these motherfucking colors. Cut me open. I bleed these motherfucking colors. That aneurysm is not far away, is it? Jelly beans having an aneurysm. Woo! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Turned into Ric Flair. <laughs> oh. woo, woo, woo. Texas! You need a gun as well. Oh, we've got guns here, like. Are they your roses? <laughs> <laughs> Stay down, motherfucker, or I'll kick you in the fucking face. I don't think we can do more questions. I think we just need to talk to Draymond. Talk, ask me anything you want to know. Draymond. Are you undercover? It as a cape, and sometimes in my barbecue sauce, I use it as a bib. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is witness relocation. This is witness relocation. Y'all need Adam to- Rowe becomes this. Yeah, y'all need to stay quiet now. You're in Austin. You're trying to hide from those Marissa type polices. No, I'm not trying to hide from oh, anybody. No. I never hid from a goddamn fight in my life. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Ask just for BMW. Woo! <laughs> um, Adam's gone. <laughs> Mentally, now Adam's gone. We've got Draymond in there, haven't we? We've got Draymond. Ooh. It's time to have a word with Ad- <laughs> with Draymond and Dan talking loads Did of you shit. Forget that you win, Adam. Then. Yeah, <laughs> Adam and oh shit! Uh, woo! <laughs> That's all you've got is the woo <laughs> and the guns. It's me. I've got me guns. Who do you vote for there, Draymond? What's I your- vote for who, based on policy, motherfucker. <laughs> Sensible answer. <laughs> I, I use the flag of Texas sometimes to get a little barbecue. Well, woo! I'm Draymond. Fuck, woo! Who'd you vote for? Well, I vote on policy. Uh, it, it, it's all about education for me. <laughs> you seem like a Republican, Draymond. No, I, I change my mind like the wind. Well, like. Someone says something I don't like. I'm like, I'm not voting for this piece of shit anymore. I'll vote for the opposite just to piss you off. Good. I think I feel like my accent- motto is policy, policy, policy. <laughs> <laughs> that is no one's policy. That is no one's motto. That's my that's my philosophy mama, on life. My mama always said, "Life policy, is life. Policy, 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 policy." Woo! <laughs> Harry and Indy clone right now are just. <laughs> Working away. It's both a low point and high point of this <laughs> pod so far today. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. I I would go to Texas. I think you do really well. To be honest, it, it interests me more than New York or LA, which I feel like is a bit like hacky. Not it's, hack. It's, a bit it's cliche as well. What? Take this to a a, a Texans game. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Dog shit. <laughs> Dog shit, Woo! by the way. It was the draft last night. That's good fun. Was it? Did you watch it? Uh, I recorded it and watched it this morning. Is it good? It was all right. A few trades here and there. Mm. Exciting. First I three picks were pretty standard. Day. Yep, it's really good. good. So it's a teacher shit about it, doesn't it? Everyone boos Roger Goodell, the commissioner. That's like the banter. Whenever he turns up, even though he does every pick in the first round, he's there the whole time. He introduces everyone. The fans just give him shit, boo him. I d- it's I don't know. Like obviously he hands out fines and everything, and then you've got all the players backstage and they're in different booths now. They can't be anywhere near each other because of COVID. And then and then basically they come out and they try and look. Some of them look really smart. Others look like they have just sold five kilos of heroin and have dressed just after it. Like literally, like wow, I've got all this drug money. This is how I'm going to dress. And then they do the Bill Burr bit, like, how do you feel? You're a member of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I just want to thank God. want to thank God. Uh, you, it seems to be the last thing you guys said. So, yeah. yeah. Shall we have a break and bring Freddie Quinn in? Yeah, Draymond. I think you Woo! called it. <laughs> There's just no more pod left in this section. Woo! Hey, listen to this. This podcast, Have A yeah, is sponsored by Beer52.com. And we have been. For about a year now. They are our OG sponsor. And I've got to tell you about them. If you don't know who they are, they are the number one craft beer discovery club in the UK. What's a craft beer discovery club, Adam? Well, I'll fucking tell you, mate. Okay? What they do is they help you discover craft beer. They send you different craft beers every month from all over the world. Different themes every month as well. You might get a month worth of South African beers. You might get some from Argentina the next month. You might get some from South Korea or something. All over the world, they'll help you discover the best craft beers that you've never heard of. And here's the best thing. Because you're a listener to this podcast, not only do you get a free case of eight beers and an award-winning beer magazine 
for free just by going to beer52.com slash word. All you do, pay the postage and packaging, eight free beers, free beer magazine, and a little tasty snack as well. And also, it helps us out. You support our sponsors. They support us. This thing can keep going. We can keep the Have A Weird Gravy train on the fucking track. So go to beer52.com slash word right now and get yourself some bevies for nothing. You know, last night I was in bed after I got home and, uh, well, this morning, more, more like really. I was just laying there. I love it when he gets really into the details of his story. Go on. I was just laying there and I was like, I wonder what an albino Stevie Wonder would look like. And then... Hi, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> he, what, what? You really do look like some pretty bad allegations <laughs> have come out in the paper today and like, fucking hell, you're not, not going to go on TikTok for a little bit? I uh, I just like to come out and say that some women are liars. Uh, so <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, don't fucking keep that in. That's gone. We don't edit no. anything. Ah, oh, no, nothing is coming off. Listen, there, right? Okay. Spoiler alert. This is a comedy podcast. <laughs> I don't want, I mean... Imagine every, if someone's got to an hour and a half into this podcast going, but what are they trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you fucking think so, wouldn't you? But of all the shit that you guys have done on this podcast, of all the things that you've said, of all the things that you've done, the only fucker that's been cancelled from this podcast is my fucking career, isn't it? Yeah, but the, the mistake you made there was that you wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and I didn't. And yeah. that's I, I can't lose a publishing deal. If I haven't got one. Are we but, allowed to talk about it? Yeah, fuck it. Let's talk about it. I know she listens, so hi. Uh, <laughs> no, well, she doesn't listen to all of it. She listens to 60 seconds of a three and a half hour. I'm still pissed off about it. a good it. job, really, isn't it? You what? <laughs> Probably is. Freddie really. wrote a book and got a literary agent, and then... And when we're talking like a literary agent, she <gasps> this particular literary agency is good. Yeah. Like, it's not like fucking... You know, it was a penguin. F- fucking a rush of books. Do you know what I mean? It's like proper <laughs> a rush of fucking. Books. It's a proper literary agent. Um, <laughs> and and after after a couple of uh, after a couple of weeks, like you know, I sent the full thing. You know, she gets in touch with me after a couple of weeks, and she's like, "Yeah, I've uh, found some stuff online that I'm not <laughs> comfortable with." It's and time to have a word. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is as well, is with with the way that my career's gone over the last 10 years, when people say I've found some stuff about you online, it could genuinely <laughs> be one of about 50 things. Yeah, yeah. And so I always have to keep my cards close to my chest and be like, oh, really? Well, why don't you tell me <laughs> what <do> you think <laughs> it is? You, you go first. You go first. I, I was just in a okay. chat room. I was in a chat room. Um, she said she was 16. Because there's some stuff that's, <laughs> let's be fair, there's some stuff that's that, that I've done in the past that's more defendable than others. So um, I, I, there's some stuff that I've done in the past <laughs> that's more defendable than others. Um, uh, so, yeah, she said, basically, she said, um, I saw a video of you doing an interview online <laughs> where you talk. So that's her first mistake. She calls this, she doesn't call it a comedy podcast where it's, I mean, I imagine it's fucking... Listed as comedy in iTunes, she no, it's deep hit, deep you know truth, truther podcast deep interviews. That's, what, that's one of the that's one of the deep truther, truth, deep truth. 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 I don't know why I was on this, about. this. Is the truth? Two that's hungover a, guys and they're both looking at me going, "What the fuck are you on about, mate?" <laughs> Do you know what it was? Is you started with the word deep and you knew that wasn't the right word. Uh, no, and you fucking crawled. <laughs> you crawled. Is, is it, I'm recovering from a cold. I'm full of cold and flu. These two are hungover. This fucking whole podcast is rattling towards like God knows where we're going, mate. So you any, trying to absolve yourself? So anywho, right? She said, "I saw you on an interview." where you talk about manipulating women um, and, you know, uh, you know, that's not acceptable. And she questioned, so, so there's a character in the book who is based on a real character of, of somebody that I taught at school who was a vit- victim of revenge porn. Um, and she went as far as to question the validity of how sincere I could be to somebody that I was teaching because I've got a slightly 
coarser sense of humour. So I'm apparently incapable of human empathy. And But did she not see it as a joke at all? Did she no, see it as an... No, inter- she completely... Because what fucking interview is that where you're like, yeah, we have you been on that misogynist <laughs> podcast yeah. where they sit down and talk about how they take advantage you know what, of women? Do you know what you should probably do? And again, I'm not telling you how to run your podcast, but just to make sure that it's definitely a comedy podcast... Maybe you should get shitloads of comedy albums and stick them on the fucking wall. Uh-huh. Oh, you have? Oh, okay. Yeah. Shit. Maybe you should both be comedians and listed as comedians. Oh, you are? Uh, maybe you should tell jokes constantly and laugh and think. I, I mean, I don't know what it it's is. It's so funny, though, isn't it? That, like, she's a powerful person in yeah. a big industry, and she's incapable of going, he's just joking. And also, right... What's wrong with manipulating women? <laughs> Is that the hill you're going to die on? <laughs> like, you, you know, don't hate them. Don't kill them. Don't do any of that. But tricking them into fancying, yeah. What's wrong with that? That's all you said. Is that a problem? Adam's... Vi- uh, Looks Dan's- like you don't want that book deal, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Dan's distancing himself. Uh, you know I mean... Uh, well, do you know what it is? I manipulate... People on a daily basis. We manipulate people for a living. We manipulate them into laughing. Well, with lies. What a great d- way of dealing with uh, gaslighting and the uh, Me Too movement there. And what's wrong with it? <laughs> we all fucking do it. Thank it's, you, white man. But but here's the thing. <laughs> Thanks for clearing up that whole problem. I'm not saying. Come on, you girls. Torture anyone or like physically assault them. You're not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, getting inside someone's head. You know, it's all, all, all fair. But love and war. Do you know what it is? Is I went. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I went as far as to say, like, to break down how the joke worked because she didn't believe it was a joke. She thought, uh, I don't think this is a joke. I think that this is you, you being sincere. And I was like, you are fucking insane. So the bit is. We were, all, you, we were all howling laughing yeah, at you as if well. If you haven't seen it, the bit is you ask me what I think I am out of 10. I say three and a half. People go, ah. Oh. In fact, I think you literally go, ah. Oh. You play some sad music. <laughs> Everyone feels sorry for me. And then I say, but what I do to make up for that is that I'm quite good at manipulating women. And the idea is you felt sorry for me. And then I said something horrible. And now you don't feel sorry for me. And that juxtaposition makes a lot. And I literally explained it to her. She was like, nope. This uh, direct quote, she said, um, it is a microaggression that uh, contributes to a culture where, um, you know, women run safe and stuff like that. And it's like, it, really, yeah. are, are, are you not bleeding this dry? But she said, her exact thing was, she said, uh, you're going to, you, you might have trouble getting this published because of what's online about you. And my response was, Hitler's got a book. Yeah. <laughs> Re- really good measured response there. Wait, but I, but <laughs> He's got a fucking publisher. But it's true. Jimmy Savile's got a book. Katie Hopkins has probably got a book. They're not trying to get them published right now, though, are they? That's the, <laughs> that's, that's the thing with Mein Kampf. A, a guy called Adolf's not going around to like publishing houses and going, I don't know what is wrong. I haven't even done a deep interview. <laughs> I, I do not know why Goldstein and Goldstein don't want to publish my book. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have chosen a different publisher. And why am I so calm? Hey, I'm Adolf. Do you know what? It, Did Hitler write Mein Kampf? Yes, it's called My My Kampf is my, my story, fucking story. Ra- oh, when did he write that? <laughs> you know, after his after the war. Oh, it was in yeah. response to one. His memoir. It's like, well, I'll fucking do one. Now. Yeah, yeah. It was like a, it was like early rap battling. Yeah. <laughs> she wrote her memoir. So it's like, Naya, bitch, I take it on. This is my side of the story. It was very much, but I do it to a techno beat. It was very much the Eamon and Frankie of the nineteen twenties, wasn't it? What? When did he write Mein Kampf? In the I late twenties, or I something? reckon late twenties uh, would be about right. Um, so he wrote it before he was Hitler. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was also a postcard artist, wasn't he? Like he did loads of stuff before he started being a genocidal oh, maniac. That's mad. That I. He was a painter and a vegan. And a vegan. Yeah. yeah. A vegan or a veggie? Vegan, I believe. Is it possible to be a vegan 100 years ago? Oh. I think they had plants back then, yeah. Yeah. I know, but I'm saying... <laughs> I don't think they had like a fucking vegan island in the Asda, though, did they? No, no but, they didn't. But, no. But, it was called Das Asda. <laughs> Dasda. Dasda. But, 
But even, where, what is the after? But even like, even 30 years ago, being a vegan was next to fucking, being a vegetarian was next to fucking impossible. Yeah. Um, Matt, I wonder why he was a vegan. That's why he was fuming. Do you know what I mean? I wonder why. Because he had like, a real thing about animals. But that's, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> can you imagine like being like, I don't know how you can eat the bacon because the things that the pigs go through is very, very bad. Can I? Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> Weirdest Hitler ever, ever. Like that got so Jose Mourinho in the middle of it. <laughs> That's very, very bad. <laughs> if I speak, I, it, um, I someone prefer, think I prefer, of the sheep and the cows and the piggies. <laughs> Mate, I would, Unless they are Jewish cows. I would love it if Hitler would have to go on TV and talk about how Belgium parked the bus. Do you know what I mean? This is such, a fucking, <laughs> such a fucking great. It had, honestly, if Hitler actually spoke like how you're making him speak in that camp voice, it would ruin it for me. I know that's weird, but just imagine. Ruin Hitler. it for you. <laughs> <laughs> ruin it for you, Freddie. It yeah, he really mean... enjoys Hitler. <laughs> yeah, but it's because he's strong. Oh, I love it. Back up. Back up. Yeah. Yeah. I love watching the rallies on YouTube, you know. But it would ruin it me if I thought he was gay. Ruin. I mean, then you'd be like, "Oh, I'm not enjoying this character from history." <laughs> no, but it's like the first time you heard Mike Tyson speak. Disappointed. Yeah, like, like I was expecting Mike Tyson to be like. Really deep, yo. And then he talks like this. I'm a fuck you, a motherfucker. Mm. But he was yeah. like, yeah, I just think I'm going to come out. He spoke like Michael Jackson. I you know so, what I mean? Yeah, and sort of part, yeah, it was sort of part of the, not appeal, but like the fascination, wasn't it? That he he spoke in a really like weirdly childlike way. Oh, yeah. But was I'm the gonna, most I'm dangerous gonna man. I'm going to head in some money. I'm going to get in there yeah. and pop, pop, pop. Yeah. 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 If he rung you up and started giving you shit, you'd be like, fuck off. Who the fuck are you? I'd fight him anyway. Yeah, just six weeks. Six weeks of training. <laughs> I am the best. I am the best. Everybody loves me. I am the best. I'm you getting would... that on the soundboard. <laughs> I think Tyson would turn. You, you wouldn't exist anymore. What do you mean? If he hit you once, your existence would cease. No, but boxing's about not getting it, isn't it? Yeah. Have you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should be yeah, shit yeah. at that as well. Okay, now. <laughs> this guy's so elusive. <laughs> <laughs> He he gets out of breath and nearly has an aneurysm doing an impression of a Texan. I can't I can't hit him. Um, have you seen he's got a podcast? It's boss. I've watched it. I watched the Eminem one yesterday. Do you not think though that he like talks? Sh- was it called the hot hot box or something? Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Hot Do you boxing. not think though if like someone like me, like front of Mike Tyson, he'd be a bit worried because he'd be like, he must know something I don't. What? So you you know because like he'd be like why why is yeah. he challenging me? Oh, you think he gets so in his own head, like... Yeah. I mean, I, I, everything about this guy, I should be able to knock him out. But he's so confident. Mm. He's confident. I think he's kind I of... I don't want to fight him. I'm just going to go home. <laughs> Fuck you, Adam Rowe. You play mind games. <laughs> that way, yeah, that's, that's your tactic, fighting Mike Tyson. Just be like, I'm going to go so confident, it's going <laughs> to upset him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good luck with that, Adam. <laughs> Freddie, are you available to co-host a podcast? <laughs> Have you watched Top Boxing, then? Yeah, I've watched little snippets of it. I yeah. was drawn to it by Bill Burr. Like, that's the amazing thing. Like, if you are massive and you come into YouTube and, and podcasting, well, you're, it, you're still, it's still, in, it, weirdly, it's weird to say this because there's 30 million odd YouTube channels, but you're still a big fish in a small pond. So you are drawn to it. Yeah. Um, do you yeah, Bill Burr and Mike Tyson doing a podcast. I, you can't go. He does nah, talk, I'm not interested. He does talk a lot of nonsense, though. Yeah, he's, not, he's not good at it, no. is he? Yeah. Do you reckon that uh, have a word is now at the point where you are popular enough that you could introduce a word into like the vernacular? Do you know? Do you know these big big podcasts or whatever? They, you, you said uh, he talked about hot boxing and you got into it. If you guys talked about a random sport or introduced a random word, do you reckon yeah. you'd be popular enough that 000, everyone would jump on it? 30 to 40,000 listeners we've got. We've been doing it since the start, mate. When we started doing throwing lid around early doors, and then within a couple of months, everyone was using it. And then everyone... Oh, we've definitely influenced the vernacular of our uh, <clears throat> followers 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, maybe not to the ex- that, no. Yeah. Maybe not to the extent of, like, your mom's house where yeah. I watch your mom's house. If you miss a month's episodes, they use the 
the sort of vernacular of the clips that they use so much that you're like, what's that from? But yeah, I think it, you, it just it gets in your head, doesn't it? Like mm-hmm. he started saying, "Come on, bro, come on, bro," and then it gets in my head, and then I've seen it on I've seen it online a couple of times, and then one person was like, "Oh, Dan's trying to do his fucking catchphrase," <laughs> and I wasn't. It, it happens naturally. We don't sit and go, "What words should we get in the podcast to make of it?" Like the law is gone thing, because he's so, so many times he's gone uh, right. So in this situation, like law is gone. And it's become like a weird little catchphrase. If you didn't listen to this podcast and you said to someone, Laura's gone, they'd be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Anyone who listens to this podcast properly, if you go, Laura's gone, in their head, they're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that would be a great little catchphrase to introduce into the world. Like, anytime that, like, you, you, you know how people say the game's gone? Yeah. Ah, oh, fucking Laura's gone here. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, I always use Laura's gone, gone for, like, if I want to, like, Put Dan in a situation where he's single. Yeah. So then I'd do a really long, drawn-out reason for Laura leaving. Yeah, because basically, would you fuck a 70-year-old woman re- really needs that preface? Because it's a serious conversation. <laughs> yeah. And without Adam giving me a hypothetical, like, hall pass, he's like, obviously, you wouldn't fuck a 70-year-old woman because you're married. But say Laura's gone. <laughs> and then but you- yeah, it does. That so It does sort of get in the people. I don't know. Yeah, it does. People get into it, don't they? Mm. It's a very personal thing, podcasting, because you're listening to it. You're not just watching it in the TV passively. Oh, you're actually going into it. Podcast like- fans are proper fans. They're like yeah, yeah, yeah. the fucking obsessive fans. They're listening to you four hours a week. If you're a fan of a stand-up comedian, you might get an hour of entertainment out of them in a year. Yeah. If you're a podcast fan, you get four hours a week. Have you seen the people who get tattoos of podcasts and stuff We've like got, that? One of our listeners got a tattoo. Nuts. If you listen to this, <laughs> fucking mental person. Mental. Yeah. Mental. What pods are you into, Freddie? Are you into any? Can you listen to comedy podcasts Are you not into No, it? I can't listen. So I don't listen to this. Um, uh, and I don't listen to anything like... So th- the problem is, is it's not that I wouldn't enjoy this. I probably... I, I, do you know what? I'd probably really enjoy Have a Word if I didn't know you all. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, is because I know you all and because I know a lot of the guests that you get on, it feels like I'm listening to a conversation that I want to take part in. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And so it's a little bit like, it's it's a bit weird. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know exactly what you mean. I much prefer American comedy podcast yeah. to British comedy podcast. And then there's the occasional one that uh, Carl Donnelly and Chris Martin did Babysitting Trevor, which was, I think, one of the best ideas for a podcast ever. They got Trevor Crook. Trevor Cook or Trevor Crook? Trevor Crook, who's like an old, weird, one-liner comedian who's just such a unusual, strange character. And then they just sort of did a podcast with him, but they were like, this week we're going to go and do this thing. And, and Trevor told them about it. And it was so... I love Carl Donnelly, Chris Martin's sound, and Trevor's such an interesting character that it was one of the few UK podcast that I've loved, but I know exactly what you mean. You're like, mate, this is like being in a dressing room when someone's told me to shut the fuck up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You're like, I was there. Ah. It's that exact thing. Uh, I listened to I listened to Off the Menu yeah. uh, that I didn't think I'd enjoy, but I actually think it's really, really good. Off Menu with Ed Gamble and James A. Castell. Yeah, and the one that I think... I think they're up should... to about a 1,000 downloads an episode, so good luck to them. Yeah, I think yeah. they're going to do all right, those guys. Yeah, and once you break a thousand downloads an episode, I, I think good luck to them. Good big luck, guys. things for that James A. Caster fella. I think yeah, he's going to go yeah. places. Talented young lad. Um, if you want to get into that, the best episode to to listen to, I think, to as like an entry point, is the one with Romesh. Really fucking funny. He's it, yeah. fucking gold dust, Romesh, isn't he? Um, I Have listened- you heard the, about when they had Anthony Jesselnik on, and that like he's just Jesselnik, and it just didn't fit with James A. Caster. Like he was just sort of. The way Jess on is on stage of like, I'm dead handsome and I'm really funny and I'm the best. He did that with poor old James. So all of their fans now hate Anthony Jess on Yeah, it's the it's a very bad, it's a difficult style to pull off. Like Lloyd Griffith, when he came on ours, he did the shtick of like, yeah, you know, like it's a weird thing to pull off when you're sort of doing that shtick of like, it doesn't sit well. And the very antithesis of Jess Nick is a caster in it? Yeah, like, yeah. I listen to so that's the only one that I listen to that's that, that's really a comedy one, and then I listen to really boring weird shit. So I listen to 
I don't listen to you. Yeah. I couldn't possibly <laughs> listen to you, cums. But I love boring, <laughs> weird shit. I just, I just prefer it. So prefer it. I like 99% uh, Invisible, which is a podcast about uh, design and architecture. Stop <laughs> looking at me like that. Be still, my throbbing dick. Freddy. <laughs> oh, God, you're getting me all uh, so it. I like uh, Freakonomics. Yeah, I've heard uh, Freakonomics is amazing. What's that? It's, well, it's like an economist podcast with uh, Stephen Dubner and what's his fucking name? You like to learn stuff then. Joseph Levitt. You like to learn stuff. From you, Batman? Yes, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from Batman. Robin. <laughs> from Third um, Rock from the Sun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All, and Stephen Dubner uh, present <laughs> an economist podcast. <laughs> He's a very busy bloke, you know. <laughs> but he, he actually started recording it before he became Joseph Gordon Levitt <laughs> in his early days. I feel like I'm having arse stuff. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mate, if you do, just go, oh, Laura's gone. <laughs> just, Adam's gone. <laughs> Laura's gone. Just do it within like two minutes 20 so we can get it on Twitter. <laughs> can you uh, can you clip down at Adam's heart attack, please? He really milked it up. Do you know your head's just hot? When you get to that point of an hangover where you Yeah, because you got fucking off. steaming last night before a podcast record. So and up. you booked a guy who was fucking drinking with you. Hey, hey, do you know what? Do you know what's really funny? So yesterday, <laughs> yesterday we was at uh, we was at the pub, right? We was outside, right? And this woman comes over who is, uh, she's been serving us drinks all afternoon. And oh. there's five of us on the table, right? And she goes, um, I've heard, I've heard one of you is a... A famous comedian, right? Now, we all know that, like, on the table, there's me, there's Paul Blur, there is Paul Blur's mate Gary, there's Roe, and there's Paul Smith. Now, if you had to guess um, who they're talking about, <laughs> it's pretty obvious which one it's going to be, isn't it? I could leave and table those. Gary's not looking good on the chances. <laughs> well, I mean, Blair's done some great stuff. You've got a decent TikTok. Adam's flying, but Paul is, well, objectively I mean, speaking, let's nailing be, it. Let's be fair. <laughs> Gary's on my table, and even I don't know who the fucker is. So, <laughs> so, so it's not going to be him. <laughs> so, so Blair actually says, Blair chips in, he says, oh, well, actually, we've got three comedians on this table. And then someone else chips in and goes, oh, yeah. Adam Rowe and Paul Smith. <laughs> and After he's been told there was three. Yeah, that's it. That's that's how that's how unfamous I am. Is that he heard three and thought you must be mistaken? Yeah, but there's millions of Chinese children with Freddie Quinn posters on the wall. <laughs> yeah, they fucking made them. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Get me out and glasses back on. I love that you didn't know when Mein Kampf was written, or like I knew you it just was heard it. about it, and you were like, "When did you write that?" I knew it was something to do with it. Like, yeah, right. Just, <laughs> but in my head, I was like, "He kind of wrote it because surely it ends quite abruptly." No, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not his. You're it's thinking, not his autobiography. You're, 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 thinking, you're thinking of Anne Frank's diary. That's what you're thinking of. That's the thing that no, ends abruptly. So, it's it's called my story, but it was it, it was more of wasn't it more not a manifesto? Yes. So it was like a political a, uh, call to arms, as it were. Right. So he did quite a lot of stuff in the early days, uh, like he did the <coughs> the beer hall putsch. Uh, oh yeah! In the early with, days, where they the literally got pissed and tried to overthrow the government, um, and it lasted about to the Reichstag. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Adolf. We've it's all not, had a few. Yeah, it's so not mine camp so far. <laughs> like he's not like writing it as he fucking goes. I just so you say he's not writing it as he goes. So, I, so it was all done before he became Northern. the leader of Germany, like Germany's right. if, prime if, minister. Well, no, well, well, well. If anything, it was used as That's a Führer. political sort of um, thing in order to enhance his, his political career. It was it was used as propaganda, essentially. I see. So it's not like a, a novel. No, it's not a novel. It's <laughs> it's more of a... Not a novel. He wrote it by some men next. <laughs> Must have ended abruptly. Because, you know, it's a novel and he yeah. died. <laughs> like That's fucking Harry Potter. What Adolf Hitler and the perfect world. <laughs> 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 oh. I'm a racist. <laughs> racist? Fascist. Can't be thrown where it's right back round. 
know a lot about Hitler. It's very, very. I was going to say, I, I reckon can if stick I, with a man that. If anyone's mean. deserved it, you know, it's yeah. him, innit? He's earned it, really. Yeah. Do you lend any ideas to the conspiracy that uh, he, he didn't die and he just fucked off to Argentina? <laughs> well, there were, there, were, there were Nazis in Argentina, weren't there? But there was literally no proof. So, that so Hitler he was died. Only. He died in a bunker, didn't he? With his missus, so fucking Ava Braun or whatever. Braun, yeah. They died in a bunker. How, if he didn't die, how's he getting out of that bunker, going to the fucking travel agents? Booking a flight to Argentina. Travel agent. He's the, he'd have had to he's get the a shave, lead, he's, he? the, he's the ruler of the Third Reich. He doesn't? <laughs> Absolutely. War torn Berlin. And he's like, uh, <laughs> come on, Eva. We're going to Thompson's. <laughs> the Russians are coming. <laughs> the Americans are coming. But Is it all inclusive? <laughs> Is it like to go to uh, Buenos Aires? Do you remember when travel agents were a thing? What a fucking ball like that was. It's a scam. They just Have book it, it for you? Yeah. They, they, they'd sit and there, tap, tap like that, and then they'd talk, it's lovely where you're going. It's lovely. And you'd have to go, yeah, that's why, that's why, we're, uh, that's why we're going, isn't it? Because <laughs> we've heard it's lovely. And it happened, for, it took an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Insane. Agents. And old people still do it because they, they don't trust computers. No, they, they still, don't. They still want to go and talk to a person called Debbie and go, we booked our holiday with Debbie, just like Hitler and Ava did all those years ago. <laughs> that was a huge left turn to do the, what, is a, what are travel agents about, guys? <laughs> like, we were literally in the, imagine Hitler trying to get to Argentina, and Freddie was like, stop that, guys. Aren't travel agents mad? We used one. We're absolutely we were mad. going to Cuba, and then the hurricane hit. What was the hurricane? Was a hurricane hit and destroyed. It destroyed the airport we were going to a week before we were going. So we went to a travel agent and went, we've got this much money. This is kind of the place you want to go. And she went, oh, there's a lovely place here in Costa Rica. And we went, nice one. And I went outside and booked it in the car. Right. Like, I'm not paying <laughs> you to go on fucking Thompson.com. Right, so why didn't you just go on the internet in the first place? Why did you even go in the travel agents? Because we wanted to, to like, um, recommend. Because he trusts Debbie more than he trusts Google. Yeah. He wanted to recommend something. She found the perfect place. Went outside and booked it and didn't the pay her. The thing is, if Hitler did get to Argentina, I just find it hard to believe that he'd just be happy to retire. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like him just being like, I'm just gonna chill now. I feel like that. Yeah, it's not. It's not the kind of ideology you walk away from, is no. it? No. Do you know what I mean? I think he'd be like, I'm gonna start something else here. Yeah, uh, there is a there. Is, there are villages in the Argentinian hills, aren't there, that have got like a suspicious amount of Germans. Really? But, yeah. Apparently, like there was a bit of a a, a small. So sort of what is? Like there is, there is. It's not just a random thing that people have gone. I think Hitler was in Argentina. Some some Nazis so, ended up in hidden so, in South America. So what is a suspicious amount of Germans for <laughs> for a village in Argentina? How many before it goes from coincidence to suspicious? Because I'd say three. Nineteen forty five. Some shitty, absolutely impoverished, like. <laughs> Hit little town village in the hills of Argentina, yeah. miles from Cordoba or Buenos Aires, and then all of a sudden, like, hello, <laughs> we would like a four bedroom house. Yeah, I, one, one family is weird. Your head, there's Germans in Argentina speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I thought was, as I don't speak German, and this is an English speaking podcast, I just keep doing that accent that we keep. Yeah, doing. it would have been weirder, wouldn't and it? Like, <laughs> that wasn't funny because you didn't speak German. Or Spanish. <laughs> it would have been weirder if he just did perfect German. <laughs> I just assume that we should all know what he's talking about. You could make an attempt, though. Know what I mean? Tag. Guten Tag. Well, my name is Fritz. Why is everything you do Chinese? <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> hangover podcasts are always the same like he's like <laughs> it's, just, it's like his head just wants to go you know like have you ever seen those videos of toddlers that get overtired and then they just and then they just headbutt the cheerios it's like that he's like why is not German it's fucking weird <laughs> fucking cheerios everywhere <laughs> so what are you going to do with this book not Mein Kampf. <laughs> what um, if we publish it? Have a way of publishing? Jo get the fucking curtain up in room two. Johnny plans it. Lot, lot. We need gimbals. 
I mean, to be fair, have a word. We're going it? to Texas. <laughs> Get the gimbals. <laughs> next time I go drinking with Blair, I'm fucking emigrating the next day, lad. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll fucking publish the book. Fucking twenty percent. <laughs> I didn't understand any of that. I oh. did. It fucking. Oh. Um, <sighs> um, Fre Freddie, what's going on with this book, man? <laughs> so are you actually not? I feel bad now that we are the reason you're not going to get a book made. That's why I said we'd publish it. Um, no, I. Uh... Who are you going to go to? <laughs> to get the print? Who are you going to? So what's can, your plan? Over the uh, on site. All right. Okay. Cool. Right. Where are you going to sell it? <laughs> um, on our merch, you go yeah. for the have a word hoodie or Freddy's book. Twenty percent off for ten pound patrons. <laughs> the book is only on our Patreon. <laughs> It's Adam reading it, trying not to get bored. Do you know what? I used to be a teacher. Do you know what? I'll pay you to do the fucking. I'll pay Row oh. hungover Row to do the whole I fucking audio see. book. Oh my god, <laughs> hungover Adam audio re doing the audio book for fucking. Adam. You know, like Harry Potter is a long book. If Adam had hungover Adam had done the audio book, it would be about four days of like. Oh, Fucking this wizard non still. No, he just cut Fuck to the off. end, wouldn't he? He just like missed like seven Long story pages. Short. Of the time. <laughs> yeah. hey, they killed him. In the end. He's dead. Probably alright. Fuck him. How Harry Potter finishes. Harry wow. Potter's a Tory. Is that how Harry Potter finished? I've, I've never They killed Voldemort, yeah. I, I honestly, Spoiler alert, no. I, I He's absolutely to, fine. He's old. I got to Goblet of Fire and then I just I grew up. So oh yeah, didn't I remember fucking... reading Order of the Phoenix going, I'm too old for this. Yeah, what the fuck yeah, am I doing? yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you're older than us. He, he was mm. uh, Harry Potter was when he went to Hogwarts was our age when the book came out, so we were literally the same age. Yeah, we grew up. Yeah, you grew up on it. Yeah, and th that's why the books got a bit more. They got darker and more serious. They, you weren't meant to be an 11 year old that read no. all <laughs> of the books at once. Like it does get a little bit more. It gets dark on not, the third one. Yeah, even the second one actually. Uh, but yeah, there's that creepy thing in the film where they're all old, and you're like. Uh, at the end of the last one I mean yeah. Paula Radcliffe can't fucking uh, <laughs> I know I sh Daniel Radcliffe can't act <laughs> oh, anyway Adam my so god lost, so I've not seen the film so when you said Paula Radcliffe <laughs> I assume that's who they cast for Hermione yeah, and I was yeah, like yeah. that's insane yeah, the yeah, runner yeah. it's fucking yeah I, 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 I Harry Potter and the pavement tw tweet go on. <laughs> I, I'm fucking like the thing is with Harry Potter is I just got so quickly bored of it and I never was asked about how it finished and I've never watched any of the films so Voldemort basically you know the bad guy he comes back alive <laughs> this is why I want you to read the fucking he, he, basically what happens is right before it even starts oh my god yeah right Voldemort split himself his soul into seven pieces yeah right you need to get them all together sort of thing for him to come back so someone does that Voldemort's back and he's like fucking smashing it I'm gonna be the boss again right and then Harry that's Potter, you reckon that's Voldemort's <laughs> first words. I'm fucking smashing it. <laughs> this is why a scouse thirty-year-old bloke didn't write Harry Potter. Basically, right, as a kid, it's fucking funny, mate. Got a bit of magic, and he's got his fucking little Tory fucking magic friends. And he goes to a boarding school full of a load of nonsy Tory magic fuckers, and in the end, that's bullshit. It's like, <laughs> Uncle, so Uncle Steve, back, Uncle Steve, right. read us a bedtime story. I fucking skip to the end. <laughs> Come on. Comes back alive. Harry Potter, Ron, and Hermione are like, fuck this. <laughs> it's going to be shit if he's in charge. Right. So they concoct a little plan and they do a little fucking whoosh and they kill him. <laughs> That's all of the books in two lines. <laughs> Fuck this. They do He's a dead. little whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. That's um, what happens. Oh, fucking hell. Him and Addy, like, their power things lock in the middle. And it's ha like, oh, who's going to win? But then what about Jaws? What's that? What's the. Do the, do the Adam <laughs> row. Hungover Adam explains Jaws. Fucking. <laughs> Go on. Go on. What's Jaws about? <laughs> So fucking shark, and he's massive, and he can fuck off. <laughs> Biggest shark you've ever seen. What Starts happened? biting boats and that. Yeah. So I think they stab it. <laughs> Jaws. Jaws. I think they stab it. What about, stab what about Shawshank? So this fella, he gets, 
he gets put in prison with Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, uh, that's in, that's actually in the book. <laughs> there was a guy that he went to prison with Morgan Freeman. Ghost and Nick and no, Morgan Freeman. It doesn't have a character name. <laughs> Stephen King was really specific about who he wanted in the fucking film. So he wrote Morgan Freeman in the book. <laughs> the character's name. That's like a, like a <laughs> casted note. <laughs> Go on, what happens? And, uh, he gets a fucking spoon and things as well. <laughs> he gets a spoon. <laughs> what about what about Hamilton? Hamilton. Oh Jesus! So this fella? No, I'm joking. You born can't. in the Caribbean. Oh no! Right? Now it, uh, that's the whole. No, don't do it. Born in the Caribbean. No. Get goes to New York on a boat because like. All, Look at his eyes. He's awake now. All, all the locals chip in and give him a, a, a boat ticket. Hamilton. Right. Gets to New York and he's like. I reckon we should fuck Britain off. And he's like one of the... Quite long, this, compared to the others. Oh, God. Well, he, he, yeah, they have the Civil War. Jaws. Jaws was. Big shark. I think he stabbed Biting him. Biting everything. I think he stabbed him. <laughs> Shawshank. Guy goes to prison. Morgan Freeman. Gets a spoon. Fucks off. What about, what about Hamilton? Let me sing it for you. <laughs> I am Alexander Hamilton. La, 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 la. I'm a boring cunt. La, 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 la. I love John Adams. La, 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 la. Oh, fucking <sighs> hell. All right. Let's have a little break. I can't, I can't laugh anymore. Let's have a little break. What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit t-shirt, jumper, dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking t-shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Word merch? Go to haveawaredpod.com and get some then instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't be leaving the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawaredpod.com. Uh, yeah. We're back. Once the camera's on, <laughs> Rowie's ready. There you go. Um, should we do some other words? Should we do some? In. We've got loads. Too many. Stop emailing in. Definitely don't stop emailing in. If you've got some other words, have a word pod at gmail.com. If you've got questions for the lids, or have a word pod at gmail. Problems. He is such a bell sniff. Why do you need us? You just send everything in. Everything. Why would you want my opinion? Look at me. Um, <laughs> that is a good point. <laughs> Aya Lids, can you ha please have a word with my mate Emma? She's obsessed with the pod, and ever since the lock-in, she has been quoting Ishan's, eh, eh. We went out for the first time this weekend, and she kept randomly shouting it. We were in a queue at Crazy Pedro's, and she shouted, eh, eh. And the bouncer next to her was a black man who thankfully found it funny. After that, she continued to randomly shout eh, eh, the whole day. And while it was amusing, I don't particularly want to get my head smashed in because my mate is being casually racist. Love the pod. P.S. This will be the second time you've had to have a word with Emma. She's the Tory who puts slices of lemon in turbo shandies. Cha! Thanks. So she's been doing... Serial offender as well. The catchphrases. She's been doing... I think whoever wrote this in needs to have a word with herself. Just, you know, she likes a podcast. She's got a catchphrase from it. If people get upset by that, that's their problem. Fuck you. No, that's not how, uh, that's not how that totally works, is it? Right. Ah, you know, she likes it. She likes it. It's an impression of a uh, Nigerian. It's not. She can it's do... It's an impression of, of an impression. a Bangladeshi Pakistani doing a Nigerian. Bulletproof. <laughs> Your get out because Ishan is Bangladeshi Pakistani is like it, it's all encompassing, isn't it? You can do whatever <laughs> as long as Ishan says you're sound. <laughs> and that will stand up in a court of law and for this girl Emma. <laughs> Excuse me, I find that really offensive. Adam Rowe says <laughs> that Ishan says it's fine. So so I'm I'm not sure really what the problem is here. Is this person suggesting that this Emma is going around going, eh, eh, and she is worried that people will go, that sound seems racist to me. Yeah, she yeah. is. Really? Yeah. Because I wouldn't, if I She's was... She's overthinking it, isn't she, Freddie? I mean, I would think Tourette's over anything else. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if you were in Crazy Pedro's and you heard a, a girl going, eh, eh, like that every few minutes, you'd think... <laughs> 
Hey, you really know your racial sounds. If you are a random person who's getting some scrawny and crazy Pedros and you were, eh, and you go, that white woman is doing a Nigerian bus strike. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's, yeah, really good point. <laughs> of all the, like, casually racist things that go on, I think two syllables that could honestly be just a weird car horn. Yeah. Eh! Yeah, I mean, I think as as far as disguising <laughs> racism goes, you're doing a great job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's nobody that's picking it up unless you're a, a uh, member of the podcast. On the subject of Tourette's and racism. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be good. Finally, Adam right. gets an in for this. Right. No, think about it. Right. Racism is a hate crime, isn't it? You can't just go around screaming the N-word in the faces of people who are upset by that word. But if you've got Tourette's, you can't help it. So, are they still committing a crime? Or do they get a little, a little like blue badge to go, ha ha? The Empass. Racist yeah. Tourette's. You know what I mean? How would that sound? How would it sound? <laughs> so, let's say, like, it was, <laughs> let's say it was I'm like. I'm joking. I'm joking. L- let's say it was like a Polish person, just to be safe, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Very well defended. <laughs> so, they might be like, Polish twat, Polish fuck, fuck off, Pole. Yeah. F- po- 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 Polish cunt. Polish cunt. Yeah. The lesser of the pee bombs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Po- Pol- con- Polish. Pol- cunt. Babe. C- c- cunt. Right, Come okay. Poland. Why are they Poland in such cunt. close proximity to this Polish person for this no, long? The, the might not be. Oh. Because that's how racist Tourette's work. It's not always in and around the yeah. person. Because that just looks like racism, doesn't it? Like, po- yeah. yes. Polish cunt. Pole, pole, but if it was the N word, but if it was the N word, but isn't the whole thing around Tourette's is that it's kind of like a misfiring with your brain in that your brain forces you to say the most inappropriate things yeah. ever. So the fact that you're saying them, it, you <laughs> recognise that they are inappropriate, and so therefore, sometimes yeah, yeah but sometimes Tourette's is just like whistling and that. But it is dangerous, isn't it? Because it. It's the brain ticking. He's so, so fucked him. You so know? it's the brain. It's the brain going. Worst thing I can possibly say. He's still then, pissed at it. <laughs> honestly, when he last week he went, can we move the uh, podcast record to Friday because we're all going out Thursday? I literally went, all right, yeah, yeah. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> um, it's the worst thing you can say. Is it like a not always, but is that part of it? Yeah. So yeah. like you you if you've got Tourette's and your nana's there, you're like, don't say cum flaps. Cum flaps. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's so there's you, no filter, is there? Yeah. The so filters. if you go to a hip hop night and you've got Tourette's so dangerous dangerous game. Have you is never that had that yeah. So have you yeah. have you never had that thing <laughs> where like your brain <laughs> Don't go to a DMX concert with well, anyone because he's dead. But yeah. don't go. Be fucking rubbish, yeah. wouldn't it? Don't go. Jehan stands up in. Co- Jehan stands up in court. <laughs> like a medical thing. Jehan, if they took you to court for being racist, and you were like, "No, it's a medical thing," do you reckon they won't get away with it? I reckon you'd have to. That's show essentially what I was asking. Like a doctor. So yeah. you'd have to. But you've had the thing, haven't you? You know when you your brain has like inappropriate thoughts. Intrusive like, thoughts. Intrusive thoughts. So, like, for example, when I see, like, a baby, I always think, punch it. Like, always. <laughs> yeah. Do you not think, what if I punched it? No, no, no. I you just actually think, think punch, punch it. it. All right. Yeah, so, throw so coffee in its face. Especially if it's... Uh, throw coffee into it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Swirl it. Throw coffee in its face. See what happens. It's the, it's the worst possible thing you could do in that circumstance. Totally. So, when I see a pregnant woman as well, in my head, I think, punch. Like, and I can't... I can't help it. I never do it. I just think it in my the head. First thing you, you think don't do you it. You don't person. do it, do you? Punch. You better hope that fucking woman doesn't see that. <laughs> that five seconds of content. So you're like manipulating women and punching pregnant ladies? No, but I mean specifically, to specifically in the. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about when you see a blind person? What do you think? Oh, sorry. If you see a blind person, I always wonder where they're going. Yeah. <laughs> We've always said that. Do you know what I mean? Where where are they going? Where 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 is he going? And how does he know if he's going there? Yeah, his is dog can't really tell him. And ge- this is a hundred percent genuine question, right? Does you know when they they got the dog, right? Do they tell the dog <laughs> where they go? Do they go <laughs> the butchers? <laughs> <laughs> and the dog's like, go ahead. I know. I where love that the is. butchers get sausages. <laughs> I 
are you saying the that they butchers. use their dog like a fucking sat nav? Yeah. <laughs> or, or do they ever just go, surprise me? <laughs> That's like putting your guide dog on shuffle. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see where we end up. Oh, fucking <laughs> hell. No, but when they leave the house with the dog and they go in the post office. Yeah. What's their move? So uh, the roots, the root, are the roots, the roots, the dog knows, the person knows them. It's not like, ah, oh, which post office should I go to? No, but what he's asking is, so you're saying like the dog knows the route, but does the dog How does it know, know it's going to post route? office? How does it know it's going to post office? Exactly. It, he gets a stamp and he gives it the scent. <laughs> no, but what you're saying is the dog gets taught one route and then they just do the thing. So you're telling me that if this fella <laughs> just but, wants to go to the butchers, <laughs> he has to go to the post office <laughs> and the library as well. He has to stop everywhere. All right, Malcolm, what are you here for? The butchers. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop. That's a bus. <laughs> <laughs> the dog's doing the room. Oh. I don't know how it works. I assume he goes, what's happening, Fido, lad? Uh, we need lamb chops, uh, some newspapers, and a cake. So, you know where we're going? The Asda. Butchers, <laughs> news agents, and a cake shop. <laughs> like it. Or just Asda. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or Asda. Because it's not 1940 anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what does he do when he gets no, the Asda? No, but the blind Even people, the dog can't remember yeah. all the aisles. He changes them every week anyway. Never see a guide dog in Asda. You never do. I've never seen a guide dog in a supermarket. They don't like them. Maybe they do support small businesses, <laughs> blind people. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the roots have been set years oh, ago yeah. and, they, and oh, they've not adapted to supermarkets. Why does this uh, guide dog not go to Sainsbury's? <laughs> I can, honestly, they've been taught a route and they just fucking stick to it. I mean, I'd imagine that if you were blind, our online shopping is a godsend. Do you know what I mean? Like they'll turn up and, you know, you don't need to go, do you? Yeah, That's but, true. Right. Go yeah. on, Dan. Go, 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 on. go on. Go on. Go on. Do it. Yeah. So, I, don't, I don't know what they're getting online. <laughs> Do they have to just order it through Alexa? No, there's 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 text. Um, yeah, there is. You're there's, right. There's, there's like extensions and stuff where it will read out all the text on the. Oh, oh, even, oh, I always oh, think we're flying people as well. You know, like they've got dressed in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> like you'd, you'd think more often you'd see them wearing stuff that doesn't go <laughs> on shoes, <laughs> on that? shoes with like a green hat with like a blue top. You'd be like. That, that is such a flashes. faux pas, that. You mean Blue like... top green hat. Don't fucking do <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. Like the home, the home kit top, but the away kit shorts. Mm. Nightmare. Right. You just think, like, they'd make more mistakes. They do quite well, really, when you think about it. <laughs> Seller pets, bikini top. I'm sweating here. <laughs> I bet we've got quite... I think, apparently, like, obvious, obvious it's spoken word, but there's a lot of blind people listen to podcasts. So, yeah... You know, if there's email in. Not too us. many deaf. No, no. They just watch it. I <laughs> uh, yeah. Freddy really pleased with himself. Not too many deaf. <laughs> 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 Fuck them. <laughs> no. I, oh um, God. I. It, it is a good point what you're saying. I think that most people aren't flat out blind, are they? Most people just have like. Limited vision, small b. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> they'll be able to just like see, like the post. <laughs> you can see the M for my literally piece. there. Yeah, 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 totally. So, so I reckon it's just about helping them get there, and they can, you know, once they're right in front of it, then they can. No, but what if you're properly blind and you've got a dog? Yeah. If you're properly blind, though, do you do they just give you a dog? I think they give you two. Two dogs. <laughs> they give you two and like a chariot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you riding on a chariot. Yeah. <laughs> That's just Dan's move, isn't it? <laughs> all the kids and all the kids on the estate think you're Father Christmas. <laughs> Dancer, Prancer, where you going? Post office. <laughs> Butchers. 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 Cake shop. Mike Tyson. <laughs> no, Mike Tyson's <laughs> back. Isn't he? Oh shit! It is a good question. No, where is he going? And how did he know they're there? I think they would say to the dog, right, we're going. That, that, I mean, that can't happen. We're going with Nance today. They, All right. They lift the dog's ear up and just whisper like, you know. <laughs> lift the dog's ear up? Why are you making, that sounds so rapey. 
<laughs> lift the dog's ear up. The dog's like, fucking butchers. <laughs> Shit, don't tell anyone. <laughs> that guy should not be allowed a dog. I don't give a fuck if he's blind. Come here. Take me. Sit, shut up. Don't tell anyone. Awful. Oh, do, dear do you me. know what? It's weird because I've, I've never thought about it up until now. But yeah. That happens a lot on this podcast. <laughs> you've, got a fair, you've got a fair fucking point. Yeah. Where are they going? Where are they going? And uh, and how does the dog know what journey? Because the, there is only two options either. The dog knows where everything is, where he can go, right? <laughs> JJB. Right. 20 J- years ago. JJB. <laughs> JJB. Got a time traveling dog. <laughs> right. To Woolworths. Yes, open in the air. Open the air. I want to go back to 1989. <laughs> Blockbuster next. Come on. <laughs> Oh. Let's go to a quick save. Oh, imagine if you had a dog that only knew how to take you to places that are closed. <laughs> oh, the son, oh, the old blind guy. I've come to the butchers. What are you on about, mate? This is a phone shop. Can I thumbs off with you? Can I have a Galaxy S20? Oh, God. <clears throat> Email any of you know. Yeah, please. please do. And I know we're taking the piss a little bit, but genuinely, we'd like to know. If we'll you just could Google it, couldn't we? Google it right nah, now. Oh, oh, real. Don't Google it. Don't You're on it. Never Google things. It's funnier when we don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do you know, also, do you know the beeping for the traffic lights? That's good, isn't it? I know that was for blind people, but then that was for the dogs as well. Yeah. And deaf people, there's a little rotating nodule underneath yes. as well. Yeah. Yes, there I is. I always think, though, with if that, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's for what? Deaf people? Yeah. Right. What if two deaf people turn up at once? Hang on. Why do deaf people need something to cross the road? Did you use the I think it's eyes? blind deaf. Oh, blind and deaf. Yeah. <laughs> you fucked it. Any cars here? Yeah. Do you know? I remember we're from the same bit of Preston. Yeah. I remember when they went in at Liverpool Road near the water tower. Yes. And for ages you were like, "Oh, I've, I've passed the green man." Yeah. We and were it was told like a was... little. It was like a little. Yeah. Bit twisted. We were told if you spun it, the light change quicker. <laughs> Genuinely In, Impatient Deaf and blind people Got loads of places to be <laughs> Twist this fucker Yeah uh, Imagine being deaf Blind and mute Like what's the point Of podcasting Of anything You know what I mean Jesus Can't Adam. say anything Hear anything Or see anything Answers uh, <laughs> Emails Have a pod at gmail.com If you've not Already Ended it because life finds a way. Because life finds a way. Because you get to feel the little nodules under, <laughs> like, what you're doing crossing roads as well. Fucking someone, Liverpool Road. How does someone tell you that that's there? <laughs> <laughs> how do you know it exists? Love talking about disability, me. Yeah, I'm yeah. sweating. Me. Never feels tense as fuck, does it? I love it. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I know. Adam. <laughs> We're, that's like that's literally like ice skating on the thinnest ice ever and Adam goes shut up you fucking pussies watch me pirouette on that wet bit <laughs> what's the fucking point uh, yeah we skated for him nicely and Adam yeah. went nah fuck nah <laughs> jumped on the ice oh shout out anyone with fucking any of who's surviving and just nailing it and still listening to our bullshit if you're genuinely deaf or blind and you shut you out shut out shut out like with David Gretti. Yeah, like was. <laughs> shout out anyone to deaf and blind. Double shout out if you're both. Oh, my. Oh. Oh. Shout out if you're deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Do you read the subtitle, Andy? Yeah. <sighs> so they can read the subtitle. Or I... feel it. Do you know? Really, oh. really interesting conversation, that, guys. And I'd like it to stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got an email from... Who says, all right, boys, love the podcast. Wondering if you could have a word with me. Basically, for the last year, I've been struggling to shag without the thought of getting the bird I'm with pregnant. This has made me get to the point of wanting to wear a Johnny when I know she's on birth control. If I don't do this, I end up convincing myself there'll be a little man, a little me in nine months. I'm 21 and genuinely couldn't think of anything worse than having a kid right now, but it's starting to get in the way of me fully enjoying myself in the bedroom. Any advice would be appreciated and would be like uh, and would like to be kept anonymous. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carl. I do it every time. Every time I say the name and then I go, oh yeah, and it's anonymous. Just I'll bleep just it. Bleep it. Wow, cheers, um, mate. Just uh, put it in an ass. Also, have you ever had any pregnancy scare that made you <laughs> was, shit yourself? 
I was uh, about to say the same thing. Just bummer. Bum fun. <laughs> just bummer. Right. Email, bum email now back. Just bummer. He's, 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 but is, is she trying to get pregnant? No. 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 She's on birth, birth control. control. So what? So what is he? What? He's just a warrior. He's a warrior, Freddy. <coughs> Oh god! It's very he's common in young he's, people. Look. He's twenty-one. Is he? My, my, is he my skinny My friend was born. Uh, You'd hope so. As as, <laughs> as a result of sex between uh, her mum and dad. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> what? Honestly, I love it. What? Because of intercourse. Well, she was on the pill, and he wore a condom, and she still swam through. Life finds a way. Wow! Really? Wow! Mad, that? Where did you get them Johnnies? Yeah. Right. I mean, that every every bloke in the room just went, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Could you not get a, a abortion? Is this not off the... <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> That's Freddie's advice. I'm backing out. What do you mean you're backing out? Freddie. If you want an abortion, you go get an abortion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, someone's pro-choice, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Get me around, I'll think about hitting her, so... <laughs> Well, that was a callback, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we I call a callback. No fell asleep for a bit there. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> imagine, imagine I listened to sixty seconds of your three and a half hour podcast. Fred, have you not learned the lesson? Yeah. <laughs> what was the story you told at the start of this? No, do you know what? Do you know what? I'll never, I'll never learn my lesson. Unfortunately, don't do it. It's why you're one of our favorite guests. Exactly. I, I like. Don't learn. Any I lessons. like joking. Don't write a book. Come on, here every like, three months. <laughs> exactly. Instead. I like joking about things that are rude, and I want you all to know. If I'm ever at the point where I take it too far and I have to publicly apologise, I did not mean any of what I said. Oh, God. Of the apology. I used to say that on stage, didn't I? At some point in time, I'll have to apologise for these jokes. Oh, yes, you did. And I'd be like, I want you to know now that I don't mean it. Like, I'll be on Channel 4, sat up as a Piers Morgan. I was like, I'm very sorry for the things that I said about those people and they've got every right to be upset with me and blah, blah, blah. Do you remember when Dapper Laughs went Loved. on Newsnight and apologised? Think about that sentence. Dapper Laughs went on Newsnight <laughs> to, <laughs> to apologise. Apologize. And Newsnight booked yeah. it. Yeah, and news, They were like, yeah, this would be good. Newsnight was like, do you want, do you want to come on national TV and apologise for your shit jokes? And he was like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. There's no way I'm going to get blindsided. Did you ever watch the video? The thing is, his set was littered with microaggressions that contribute to uh, a society that makes it very uncomfortable for... Uh, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> blind people. The blind, the deaf. Both. Bothies. Beautifully done. And bothies. That's what they're called. Um, Mute would be the worst one of all of them, though, wouldn't it? No, Just I think... Like, <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't be trying to force a word, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. That's like blind people He's walking around <laughs> trying to fucking... <laughs> <laughs> De deaf people doing a Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Mute people just going, I'm just not trying hard enough. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Oh, oh, why have we done this? Jesus section? Christ. <laughs> this has been such trouble. What's his problem? I don't he's a warrior. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. And he's worried that, God forbid, and having just had a baby... I can see his point to a certain extent, but I was the stupid fucker that was like, ah, I'll be fine. I'll pull out in time. Here's my magic trick. <laughs> um, yeah, pulling out's just not a thing, is it? You just can't. It You've got pre-cum, pre though? What about the pre-cum? Yeah. Oh, I think pre-cum's a bit of a fucking... Myth. Not a... Now, not a myth, because they're not... No, because my nana... Her best friend, <laughs> she was actually born from a man and a woman and pre cum. It was the war, it was the war, and they only put it in a bit. And then the bombs started dropping, like you know, those sirens, the pre cum. And that was Hitler, she was Hitler, it was Hitler, Mein Kampf, my pre cum. Mein Kampf is actually my pre cum in German. Little just fact. Do a bit um, more, um, just do a bit more fucking foreplay, man. A bit more oral uh, sex and shit. Can I just say about the pulling out? I think it's fine. The pulling out is fine. I've the I've heard lads say like I've heard lads say like I could never pull out. You're like, really though? Is it? Can you have, have you not that self control to be like? It, it does would, ruin it. It would totally ruin it. I've never had to, but I'd, it would totally ruin it for me. You've never had to. No. Just <laughs> never had to. Pull out. 
Now either way to Johnny or just come in them. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Come in them. Fucking in them. No Christ. names. <laughs> no names. Just them. Just them. come in just, them. I either just, just press I either the were button, Johnny. We are going to jail. Press the button. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way that you said it as well like those were the only options <laughs> like there was, there was no other way for me to either wear a job Do you, does that mean that whenever any woman that you've had sex with sees you not wearing a johnny then they know that you're just gonna jizz in them i mean i haven't had that conversation with them ever. <laughs> listen i no Johnny, so obviously. <laughs> just just so you yeah. know. Just so, so you haven't even prepped him. You haven't even given him a, uh, a the, heads up. Do you prepare the end of sex? You what, sorry? Do you prepare? Do you, do you yeah, I say, just, yeah. So, just so you know, I am going to cry at the end. So. <laughs> Hang on, if you're in a relationship, you do have the, like, you know, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's not all one night stand chat. Like, you can be in a relationship. Me and Laura weren't on the pill or using condoms for a long time. Ballsy. Yeah. But I'm... I don't know. There's also also. So what were you doing? One, <laughs> the rhythm method. No, I just like I'm like, look at the club, and then I I go, and then sometimes I'll be like, grab it, <laughs> grab it, grab it, what? come in them and grab it, grab what? No, and then I like come out, and then she goes, oh, boom, 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 boom. give me the old, you know, polish oh, it off, Shandy. Yeah. Oh, I it, was barking up the wrong tree with that. Grab, what did you think it was? <laughs> I thought you meant grab your cum. <laughs> Catch it! Catch it! That's why I thought you were talking about trying to conceive, and you were going grab it, and then you went boop, 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 and that was her rubbing it back in. What kind of fucking <laughs> hand-eye coordination would you have to be to be like, oh yeah, are you about to come? You about to come? Yeah, I'm coming up. Grab it. Okay. Da -da -da. <laughs> Right, babe. Absolutely. I'm trying for the baby. So instead of going to pull out, I'm going to shoot it at the dartboard. And if you could just catch it on its way. Yeah. And then. Listen, love. Jizz is a nightmare to get out of bed sheets. Could you catch it like a fucking weird jizz ninja? <laughs> it's like wow. the karate kid with the fly, isn't it? Up we come. Cut I, I don't know. Oh, like, shit. He's se it's sensible. Are you done? No, I think we're done. <laughs> Carl's like trying to end. I've never seen Carl be like, Carl just gave me the chop, chop it off. <laughs> we're not going to better catching cum, mate. <laughs> and we're in dangerous choppy waters. Uh, Catch the cum. I reckon we should do one more. Should we do one more? Do one more. Do you want to do one more? I do. Hi, Dan. I am a deaf, blind, and mute person. And I want to know. How did I write this email? I <laughs> <laughs> can still type. <laughs> So much of this is getting edited out. It's not. I, don't sure. edit I wish it was, but not on his. Oh, Unless God. someone goes, keep me anonymous, and then we're like, oh, God, God, I wouldn't want to overstep the mark with that. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind ending my own career, but Jesus Christ, I wouldn't possibly want to say someone's name errantly. Um, we haven't really got another uh, I have a word. Do you want to end on a question, or are we, are we just, are we, should we just call it? Is it a would you rather question? It's um So somebody asked me Just a, do it. Somebody asked me a would you rather question. Oh go on, let's on have a uh, on a no, well it's it's not great this, but the thing is is <laughs> God, do you God. ever get those would you rather questions and it's so obvious which one you'd rather do? It's like why are you even fucking asking? We've had just, them all. Just ever. Well, someone asked me, uh, would you rather only eat garlic bread Ooh. or never eat garlic bread again? Yeah, they're really over eating garlic bread there, aren't they? Mate, what, for breakfast? Do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. There are some really good would-you-rathers that you don't see a good would-you-rathers on the page. Like, it's funny because we've used them since January last year. There's ones that I've read and gone, yeah, that's a good one. And Adam's gone, no, mate, don't want to eat garlic bread all the time. And then you're like, oh, yeah, shit, that was rubbish. <laughs> look, look, I mean, here's, it, like... My least favourite ones are the ones where they're like... <laughs> I saw this in a WhatsApp group, and uh, would you rather um, do the first ninety percent of a blowjob or the last ten percent? <laughs> I my least favorite ones are ones that just don't make any sense. You know the ones like, would you rather have no teeth or be made of teeth? It's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Be made of teeth. Made what of teeth. That, what does that even? Made of <laughs> teeth. I go made of teeth. Would you rather be an old smackhead? Or be the maid of teeth guy, like, <laughs> jangle, jangle. Go on, read us a would you rather. Yeah, do a blues musician. <laughs> jangle, jangle. Hey, I'm old. Teeth and Dan. 
<laughs> it really made me think Mr. of Mr. T. <laughs> Mr. T. Jangle, 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 Mr. T. I'm so teethy, god damn it. Someone brush this motherfucker. Um <laughs> Did anyone else think of the Mighty Boosh as a guy if he were a guy made of teeth? It made me really think Mighty Boosh. It's very boosh, isn't it? Yeah. Very boosh. God, oh, shout out to the boosh. Um I don't it's really hard to follow, but we'll do a random one. Um Jordan says, You, your partner, and your dad are all going to be on the news and front page of the echo. Um you must select one of the following that they're in the news for. This feels good because you come in, you know, in disguise. You know, you almost prep for this one. So you, your Could partner, and your dad are all going to be on, on the front page of the Echo in some scandal. You must select one of the following that they're in the news for. One person... Um, so, the first one. You've got to pick one of these. Starting an anti-mask, anti-vax political party. Two, found to have over 20 illegitimate children. Three a biblical fuckload of porn washed up on the shores of an African nation. Um, what, they're in it? All of which contain this person. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I am. Um, I would want me missus to be the uh, the anti-mask thing. Yeah. So I can just live with that. Yeah, Sam, don't wear your mask. I'm not really that arsed. Go for it. And I don't want her to have 20 kids or to be in loads of porn. Yeah, um, so it's you, your partner, and your dad. You've got to select one for each. I don't want any kids. I quite happily have 20 brothers and sisters, and I'm, I'd be sound being in loads of porn. So, A biblical fuckload of porn washed up porn on the shores star. of an African nation. I'm What's... a porn star. My dad's a fucking super spreader with his jizz, and my missus doesn't like masks. Quite easy, that one for me. See, it's one of them. You know what I was talking about before? Yeah. When you think, oh, this will be good, and then Adam goes... Yeah, dead easy. I would rather I don't want be... me misses in loads of porn. And I don't want to have 20 illegitimate children. I would rather be made of teeth. Thank you very much. Um, I yeah. should have ended it, Carl. Yeah, yeah. You were absolutely spot on. Yeah. You know, when you called it as a producer and you went, should we just call it there? Mm. You were fucking right. And I should have listened to you. Should we do one more? <laughs> should, we do, should we do one more? Yeah. We'll do one more. Do one more. <laughs> Keep chasing it, Dan. Uh Brendan Michael says... Um, I nearly named a comic then. Dan, is uh, Dan is Adam okay. going to be the baby's godfather at the christening? No. <laughs> Should we do one more? Should we do one more? Would you rather... Why can't I be godfather? Still be... Can I be godmother? 2021, you can be anything god you want. Person. God person. Just God. I'll just be God. <laughs> <laughs> Not have that way. I mean, it, in your head, you already are. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? I would never presume... Why can't I be Godfather? I'll be Boss Godfather. If you die, I'll take it's a kid that's play footy and everything. Mm. Mm. That's what the role of a Godfather is, isn't it? Yeah. Will you teach Football the kids coach. to play footy? Yeah. yeah. Who is going to be Godfather? Oh, the christening that that all the kids are definitely going to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there isn't going to be a christening for obvious reason because it's so you're a Satanist. Yeah. Fucking horrible in it. Well, let's uh, let's get a priest to touch this child with water, and then you're in the club, even though you're but, too young to decide if you want to be in the club. But you can say that about literally anything, like in that voice, and it sounds horrible. Yeah. Oh, would you like an ice cream, <laughs> you... Freddie? That suits your look so much. Oh, put well, your glasses and hat on. Do that again. Glasses and hat on. Cool. If you did this, then there's a problem. Go on. You're in the park. <clears throat> okay. Oh, you're really good at cartwheels. Oh, my God. Yeah, see. Sounds it, horrible, doesn't it? Yeah. It audible. Does yeah. it? Yeah. Say, get off me. Oh, get off me. Yeah. Oh. Get in the van. Yeah, that sounds like you don't want me to get off you. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, you were still right. <laughs> you were still right. Let's do one more. <laughs> one more. Linda says, just watch uh, the film Palm Springs with Adam Sandberg on... Andy Sandberg. Andy Sandberg on Amazon Prime. Sort of Groundhog Day vibe, and it was quality. He gets stuck at a wedding over and over again. If you had to get looped on a day, not at your house, though, where and when would it be? So if you had to... If you had to Groundhog Day... If you had to Groundhog Day... You were at home. I wasn't. Where were you? I was in the mags. <laughs> You'd one of your entire life in the mags. I don't think I've ever been happier than the second half of that game. 
Yeah, you'd be bored within about two weeks, though, wouldn't you? You're just remembering what was a good thing. But after two weeks of you winning the Champions League, you wouldn't give a fuck. I'm not even sure you'd give a fuck the second or third time. You'd be like, do you, oh. do you know? Do you remember that you've done this? Yeah, before? Groundhog Day. You remember yeah. everything. Oh, okay. I mean, so if you if you're in that, if you do 365 days in the Groundhog Day, you've lived a year with same. nothing around you changing. Yeah, or, like, like, you wouldn't even watch the Champions League. Final. <laughs> you wouldn't even watch because you know it's fucking ending. You know what's going on. I watch it all the time. No, you. Do you know what? With the Groundhog Day thing, the question itself is pointless because yeah, yeah. No matter where you are, you'll be pissed off within a week. Of course you will. Yeah. No matter. So you, I go to the happiest I've ever been because it's all going to be shit. Yeah. There's no way it's going to be good, so I might as well be as happy as possible for as long as possible. No, but uh, you're not going to be happy because you know what happens. I still watch that game and enjoy it now. <laughs> I, d- I love it how, like, if there is a fuck-up in the space-time continuum, you will hate that game within two weeks. Within a month, you'd be like, it'd just be a pest. Yeah, but that month would be sound. Like, anything else, I'd be bored after, like, three days, wouldn't I? So at least I get that month. I think you want to start somewhere that is an absolute blank canvas. Like, I almost, this is... I saw this question. I almost would, like, to start at home would be torture because Laura would be like, right, the baby needs changing. And you'd be on the third day of that in a row and you'd know that you're in a time-space continuum loop. So you'd just be, have to be like, bah, and walk out the door. Like, you'd al- almost want to start in a hotel in London or something. At least that's a better starting point. No, I disagree. I think that if you're going to do it, you're going to want to be surrounded by your family and, like, loved ones and stuff like that because... Or enemies and see if you can come closer together. But but that would be awful because you'd spend that day together, but they wouldn't remember anything the next day. True, but no one's going to remember anything the next day. Wherever but you, you are, are. But you are. Yeah, totally. But so I would you can engage with your family at any point. Oh, no, you can. Totally. You, yeah. So here's the thing is I would rather have pointless, meaningless conversations with my family than I would with random, strange people. I'd go on a game show. And I'd look sick because the first day you'd learn all the oh, answers. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? You'd look boss for the rest of the year then. That's a great... Go on the chase and just fucking smash it. Yeah. Just but again, once you've done it a few times, you'd be like... Oh, they'd be like, this guy knows everything. Yeah, but what's the alternative? There's no alternative. Holiday. If I'm on holiday for 11 days, I get bored. Yeah, that's true. 10 days already, he's like, I'm ready for home. <laughs> yeah. But if you're Never fucking like stuck... That. But if you're fucking stuck, you might as well be like, ah, I'm stuck with pina coladas in a nice climate. On a hotel, waking up in a hotel bed every day oh, yeah. for eternity. Yeah. That's torture in itself. Every day you'd, you'd start off. But what if you woke up and your dad was like, listen. Haven't you just described I need you a to career sort. as a stand-up comedian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I used to have before this episode came out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. See? We did one more and it worked. <laughs> I was quite happy to go further with that one. And now I'm like, no, now we're done. Now we're done. Should we do one more? Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got nothing on today. Fuck it. <laughs> no, we're not doing one more. Right, lids. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you as ever. Sign up to patreon.com slash have a word part. Yeah, we, 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 we will be exclusively dropping Freddie Quinn's book under the have a word publisher. Well, not my book, but podcast. Yes. Yeah, we're not, we've not announced that stuff yet, but there's stuff Freddie's coming. Freddie's starting a podcast. There's stuff and coming. And he's doing it in this building with us. Gonna We're going to hype it properly it's when it's all Piggoted. sorted. It's called Piggoted. You can actually go to Piggoted.com now. Oh, pop, can you? Pop your email address in, and the minute that the podcast is live, I'll send you the first few episodes. You don't have to pay for it. I'm not going to send you fucking emails going one week to go, five days, none of that shit. You just Piggoted.com, pop your email address in, and when it's ready in a couple of weeks or whatever, you'll get that nice little surprise into your email box. You can inbox and then you can listen to it. And if you like it, you can subscribe. And if you don't, you haven't fucking lost anything. So, Beautifully done. Com. I didn't know you were that organised on that, Freddie. That's really well done. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers. Woo! <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs>